You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Good evening, everyone. We'll call this meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order. It is Thursday, January 9th, 2020. I'll introduce members of our commission and staff. To my far right, we have Commission Member John Luss next to John, Commission Member Joe Chadwick next to Joe, Commission Member Joe Bayuso, turning the corner, Commission Member Fred Russo. To my left, we have Commission Member Marcy Pelusi. Our staff this evening, we have our town planner, Harry Smith, and in the corner, our clerk recording secretary, Michelle Martin. I'm Chuck Anders, chair, and I will ask our secretary to read the notice of public hearings. The Planning and Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut, hereby gives notice of a public hearing to be held on Thursday, January 9th, 2020, at 7 p.m. at the Brantford Fire Headquarters, 45 North Main Street, Connecticut, to consider the following. One, application number 19-10.10, .10, special exception, special exception modification for a convenience store, gasoline, filling station, motor vehicle service use, and modification of parking requirements located at 165 through 195 Main Street. 165 through 195 Main Street, LLC, care of Kevin Curry, applicant and owner. Item number two, application number 19-11.1, a resubdivision, 15 lots located at 99 Todd's Hill Road. Vigliotti Construction, care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant, estate of Daniel P. Cosgrove, care of Susan Barnes, owner. Item number three, application number 19-12.4, special exception for interior lot, lot four of a 15 lot resubdivision located at 99 Todd's Hill Road. Vigliotti Construction Care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant of State of Daniel P. Cosgrove, care of Susan Barnes, owner. Application number, I think the number of these are all the same, so I'll read the first part. Application number 19-12.5, special exception for interior lot number five. Application number 19-12.6, special exception for, for interior lot six of a 15 lot resubdivision. Item number six, application 19-12.7, special exception for interior lot number eight of a 15 lot resubdivision. Application seven, no, se item seven, application number 19-12.8, special exception for interior lot number nine of a 15 lot resubdivision. And lastly, item number eight, application 19-12.9, special exception for an interior lot number 13 of a 15 lot resubdivision, again located at 19 99 Tides Hill Road, Vigliotti Construction Care of Frank Vigliotti, applicant, estate of Daniel P. Cosgrove, care of Susan Barnes, owner. At said hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard and written communications will be received. A copy of the application is on file in the Planning and Zoning Commissioner's Office in the Planning and Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street. Thank you, Marcy. We'll follow our normal format for public hearings. First, the applicant will go first. You can make your presentation. Uh, if you have any experts uh, or whatever else with you, they make your comments at that time. After that, we turn it over for a summary of our staff report from our town planner and take uh, questions uh, from the commission members. At that point, we'll open up to the public. We'll ask that you come forward, state your name for the record. I think we have a couple of microphones over there. Just go over and pick one up. Uh, state your name and address of the record. Make your comments. And then we allow the applicant to respond to any of the public comments. We may or may not. Uh, finish the public hearing. We often continue public hearings uh, for more than one evening, so we'll just see how they go. With that, we'll, uh, and we also have copies of some staff reports, and I believe agendas up here as well. Um, so starting with item numbers one and two is the SP Development LLC 21 Summit Place. These are special exceptions for incentive housing overlay, district apartments, and a zoning map amendment. And my understanding, Harry, is that we're going to, we've opened that and we, we, we have continued it and, we're, and the plan is to continue it further to our January 23rd meeting, is that correct? Yes, uh, I've got correspondence from the applicant's attorney. Uh, can everyone hear me? Okay. Sure. Um, to provide for the continuation of the uh, public hearing to the 23rd meeting in two weeks. Uh, we already have a time extension that would take us through the end of this month. Okay, so if you're here on items number one or two, that's the 21 Summit Place matter. 
Uh, we're going to continue that to our next meeting, which is on January 23rd at this same location. So that brings us to item number three, actually items three through six, uh, which are all the same applicant and concerning 292 Leeds Island Road, special exception and resubdivision. Uh, the applicants, we started that public hearing at our last uh, December meeting, I believe, and uh, kept it open. There were some drainage and other issues. So, Mr. Prey. Subdivision because this lot in the front is having some plot line divisions as part of this, uh, that, um, actually, a separate lot. Um, uh, we reviewed this last time three rear lots, which is why there's multiple applications. The rear lots require a separate special exception for each one. Um, uh, prior, uh, prior to this meeting, so last the end of last week, uh, the town engineer and I did meet with um, Mr. Ryan, who's a neighbor uh, to this side of the driveway. Um, uh, the town engineer had already um, recommended some grass swales on either side of the common, uh, the common driveway. Um, as part of that walk, uh, we've decided that we're going to also put stone swales and perforated pipe in the bottom of those and connect them to the existing um, drainage that's um, at the edge of Leeds Island Road as an overflow. So we'll get as much in the ground as we can and whatever doesn't get in the ground, we'll have a place to go without puddling up all over the area back there. Um, uh, we did also um, uh, go out there and sort of take an inventory of all the trees that are near the street line here, just to kind of show that there is significant existing vegetation across here. Um, uh, I guess a few street trees could be added, but there is quite a bit of canopy and uh, already through there, and they would probably fight for existence with the other, the more mature trees. Um, so we're showing this now as lot three, not a building lot, because um, we missed the fact that the common driveway uh, for more than two lots requires a special exception in addition to all the other special exceptions. So it was a matter of um, keeping the ball rolling. He has a buyer for this front lot, being able to file this so the front lot could be sold. Um, we're showing this as not as building lot. We'll come back next month with the special exception for the driveway and put the lot back in. Um, but you've already seen this developed as all three, and that's, that's the intent. That's what we're going to do with just as, um, again, to keep the ball rolling. Um, that's the procedure that we're at at this point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Harry, any uh, comments? Sure, I mean, I think we covered things um, at the meeting last month. However, I provided um, a consolidated recommendation for lots one and two for the special exceptions for the interior lots. I'll pass that out. So while it's going around, I just want to cover um, the landscaping. So I appreciate what was mentioned um, just a couple minutes ago about the uh, existing landscaping along the frontage of the property. And uh, I proposed in what's going around a finding that um, the commission waive the uh, landscaping requirement. It's a little uh, difficult. We've got a set of regulations that has all the normal requirements of a special exception, but when you apply them to single family house development, it doesn't really fit very well often because it's requiring things like planting bed landscaping around the foundation of the houses. And these are going to be 
A, not really visible from the road, not really visible from neighbors, and people are going to want to plant essentially what they want to plant and maintain it around their own houses. So um, I think we mentioned possibly last month, maybe you may have mentioned, I didn't see anything in the file, we may have mentioned the request to waive the landscaping and also the preparation landscape plan by the landscape architect. I, I agree. I thought we, we discussed this. Um, the requirements don't really make a lot of sense in this type of a application in that we request the waive the landscaping requirements that normally apply to a commercial development for a special exception. So now that we got that you know, definitively on the record, um, we've got three findings proposed. Um, one is a technical thing. Um, also, because the special exception process, um, detailed drainage calculations are required normally. Um, again, that doesn't make a lot of sense here because you don't need design for a 10-year storm, a 25-year storm, and a 100-year storm. So um, Mr. Preddy's requested a waiver from that requirement, and that has been supported by the town engineer uh, who submitted an email to the record um, today supporting that requirement. So you'd have the drainage calculations waiver, the landscaping waiver, finding the existing landscaping constitutes excellence in landscape design, and a waiver from the requirement that the landscaping plan be prepared by a, a licensed architect. Um, uh, just in regards to the drainage, just so you really know that we didn't totally not put some thought into this, the, the scheme that the town engineer and I came up with, basically there's a storage area for about three inches of rain over that common driveway area. So there's quite a bit of storage there that's being proposed. Okay. Anything else, Harry? Um, and there's some conditions here which I can either go over now or I can uh, go over once the public hearing is closed. It's up to you. And the memo you just passed out, is, is this just for the resubdivision or is it for the special permits as well? This should be for the special exception only. Lot one and oh, two. Okay. This should be the, the title one. of it. Yeah, this says resubdivision. Were there more than one pages? Oh, I'm sorry. I passed out. Yeah, resubdivision. Yeah, they all look the same. Yeah. So here's this one. Hang on to the other one, though. We're going to get there soon. I was wondering where I could find anything for the landscape. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So these are for the. Now, two these are for the two, ones. right? Because right. the third one, when we get there, I would suggest you close and table that public hearing. And we'd have 65 days to vote on it. So once we get to the end of that clock, we'll have caught up with a special exception application for the driveway and modified subdivision, and we'll all come together in the end. Okay. Okay, so you were reviewing the findings and the recommended conditions for the special exceptions, the interior lots. Right. And uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, Ms. Pretty, have you reviewed this? Uh, I have. Um, some of this is just housekeeping stuff. Some of this was from the town engineer's comments. So, uh, I have an issue. Okay. Okay, we can we can go over those when we're when okay. we take it up. So. Great. Okay, so this um, again, the items. This is actually the first special exception. I assume we can just incorporate our comments. This is uh, into all, all three special exception applications. And do we need anything additional on the resubdivision? Do you want to comment on the re anything about the resubdivision application? Comments are, are kind of apply to both applications. Um, standard stuff at the, at the subdivision level about signature block for um, chairman and monumentation, that kind of thing. Okay. And Harry, did you have any comments about the resubdivision component of this? Um, actually, it was exactly the same finding about the drainage calculations that requirements also in the subdivision, but there is no road being created as part of this, so again, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And the town engineers reviewed that request and approved that request also. And I can cover the proposed conditions when we get to that point. Okay. And you're okay? I, I mean, you reviewed and you have no comments on the proposed conditions. Any questions from any commission members? 
If not, we'll open up to the public. Any member of the comment wish to comment? And actually, just for the record, we're commenting on items three, four, five, and six, which consist of the three special exceptions for interior lots on 292 Leeds Island Road and also the proposed resubdivision. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Jerry Barry. I live at 288 Leeds Island Road. Uh, I was here last time with the concern of surface and groundwater. I was the one that met with Jim and the town engineer, and they kind of walked me through the property and said where the swale was going to be and, and where the drainage pipe was going to go, perforated pipe, and it was going to be a catch basin, which I didn't hear Jim reference on that aspect of it. My understanding, that I, I went up to the town hall at about 1 o'clock to try to see the print, and it hadn't been delivered yet, so I haven't had a chance to see it. But my understanding is the perforated pipe is going to dump into the catch basin in the um, area right, right near my mailbox. Is that correct? We are going to have the basin that we discussed. And that will connect so it will connect to the existing? Yeah, it is on the Okay. All right. I didn't have a chance to see it today. All right. That's my only question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to comment on, on these items? Mr. Pretty, do you have any other comments? Perhaps for the record, because I'm sure I couldn't hear you, you could just say again what you were saying. Just to answer uh, Mr. Murray's question, uh, we, we did show on this plan uh, an addition. There's, there's a really flat swale that gets to the existing catch basin and doesn't really work. The water pond's up there, so we're adding another catch basin here, and that is also the location of where we're tying in the perforated pipe to. So there will be an additional catch basin added in the front. Okay. And that is shown on the plans that were revised. Thanks. Any other comments? Any other questions from commission members or staff? And then uh, I think, uh, yeah, I just want to note that there will be final drainage plans designed for each of the house lots. At the time, a zoning building permit sought because the house location itself might shift, so there's no point in doing anything about roof runoff and that kind of thing until you actually know exactly what the final design is going to be. But and I'll go over that when we get to the conditions. It was condition here that requires that that detailed drainage plan reviewed with the town engineer at that point. Okay. So then we are going to close not all the items. Right? Are we leaving one of them open? Is that I the think you can close all of them um, at this point. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Okay. So, okay, so then we can close uh, items three, four, five, and six as a public hearing uh, at this time. So that brings us then to item number seven, which is uh, Nuzzo Properties, the special exception accessory use for non agricultural farm events. And we opened the public hearing at our December meeting, and I think there were a few. Details about uh, drainage and wetlands and parking and lighting. So, Ms. Preddy, you ready to proceed? Uh, yes, Jim Preddy again, Chris Cole Engineering in Brantford. Um, so, the, a lot of those questions have been resolved um, uh, regarding the wetlands. The wetland scientist was back out there, and we went to wetlands, and they agreed that wetlands aren't there anymore for whatever reason by no fault of the current owners uh, in fact that more likely due to something that was off-site um, uh, regardless um, that's they're not requiring a permit or anything um, what else? Um, we have addressed um, the parking um, I went back out there and measured the gravel area that goes around here it was far more than the 10 feet I'd showed it was more like 18 feet and what we've shown is from the outside edge of the driveway to the front of the parking lot, uh, the parking area in the grass that will get painted. Um, there's plenty of room for a 24 foot aisle, 20 foot parking spaces. Um, they will need to get, as the lawn gets mowed, repainted as time goes on, but um, there's plenty of room for safe vehicle movements and parking in the lawn area as long as it sounded like at the last time we heard that everyone was more or less okay with parking in the grass because they're. In, you know, intermittent events. Uh, it's not um, every day kind of a thing. Um, I think those were the big items, but we did kind of address um, uh, uh, Harry's letter uh, one by one, and, read, and it was rather long, so I don't know that we want to read every one of them, but. 
No, I mean, it could hit the high points if. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so we did get a letter from Inland Wetlands. We got that today that validates in writing what Mr. Purdy just mentioned. Um, I did check with the fire marshal and the uh, police department, and they both indicated that the access drive from the, uh, the site through North Branford back to the end of Baldwin Drive is not needed, in their opinion, as a secondary emergency access. So that was one of the questions uh, brought up during the discussion last time. Um, the landscaping, the applicants formally requested a waiver of the normal landscaping requirements. Um, there is a lot of landscaping already ar around the site, and there was one property line, which didn't make any sense because it was budding property they also own, and they didn't want to put landscaping there, which I understand. But now we have the formal requirement, so you can make a finding that <coughs> the rest of the uh, landscaping on the site constitutes excellence in landscaping design and waive it. We did have another trade department. Okay, great. Proposed or existing? Proposed, we added another. Okay. Um, the parking, um, I think the new plan clears up a lot of the comments I had. Um, the increase in the width, um, I think, would be very helpful. Um, when we get to conditions, I will we'll say, I've, but just to jump ahead a little bit, I suggested a condition that, based on thinking what you uh, comment you made at the last meeting, um, that. If they could rework those spaces to show it meets the dimension requirements, then they could count them as required parking and have the ability to have more attendees, two additional for each additional parking space that meets the requirements. Um, so there's a condition here to that effect. I did recommend that um, the spaces be um, surfaced with gravel um, because to maintain consistency, really, um, with other applications that come before the commission. I mean, you could make a special exception in this case and call them overflow parking. And I do have some wording to revise what I sent you in the mail to provide for that in case the commission decides to do that. So I can pass that out after the hearing and, or even, you know, in a couple minutes. Um, so that really is, um, let's see, the only other item out here is drainage. and. Um, um, I think you stated there, there again it, it, in the letter we stated we there was another meeting with the town engineer the same day um, we met out there there was a, a small erosion issue that had already been addressed by the time he was out there um, he didn't feel that at this time there was any need for any drainage improvements because there are no permanent structures um, proposed so we're asking for a waiver of that requirement as well So you may have noticed there are several proposed findings, most of which have to do with um, waiving requirements that would normally apply in terms of providing information and some of the other items we just noted. Um, and I don't know if you want me to, again, go through those possibly after the close of the public hearing. Have you, uh, Jim, have you reviewed the... I have, I have reviewed um, this uh, revised thing so that... The, 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 even the one that was issued before today, the, the, real, the only real sticking point was the grass parking. I mean, that's a big deal. Uh, right. It's kind of a deal breaker for these folks. So um, we request that they be allowed to park on the grass like any other farm event or um, orchard type you know, setting. And, and the theory is that it's an accessory use. It's limited to the number that you can do per year so that the wear and tear is, even though it's correct. It, it's not an everyday thing. It's right. well, twenty times a year. So. Okay. But not all events are going to require the yeah. maximum amount of parking, right? That's correct. Okay. Um, just so everyone has an opportunity to talk about it while the public hearing is open, um, in the revised one that's just going around, um, the changes I proposed are highlighted in yellow. Um, so on the first page is a finding that the commission. Uh, states that overflow parking spaces are acceptable with the grass turf parking surface as long as the use is occasional and the grass surface is maintained and continues to be viable. It also provides for an annual inspection to be formed at, by the zoning officer at the time the annual operating event operating plan it should be is submitted. Okay. So that's just checking to make sure it's not being torn up. Right, that it's in good condition annually that, right. and um, 
So back on page three of four, I've proposed taking out the requirement for gravel surface, and uh, I think it's 2E, and then added a condition seven, which would say, should the annual inspection reveal concerns with the uh, grass surface of the overflow parking spaces, uh, the owner shall propose uh, for approval as part of the annual event operating plan measures to repair the grass surface, or if determined by the Planning and Zoning Commission to be necessary, pavement with gravel. So it just gives you a way, check in on it, it needs to be fixed, there's a way to do it, it's acceptable, great. If it really is, gets so busy, it you know, kind of disappears as turf and turns into mud, then up to you, you can decide if you want to make it gravel. Okay. Um, and I just did a little typo in the back because I had a condition one, so I had to change one to two. So that's pretty much it for that one. Okay, great. Also, I the Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to review that, but I understand the proposed revisions would address the conditions proposed here so I can I would suggest leaving the conditions in and yeah it was just a couple of wording things if I remember right right no I was just concerned about the parking spaces because the way it's worded it's only allowing us a hundred people where we wanted more so I just was concerned with the oh uh, no there's okay. um all right yeah, the last one allows, so if there's additional conforming parking spaces created, then you get two more attendees per additional parking space. That okay. needs to I just wanted to make sure we weren't limited to 50 spots. No, 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 I completely understand, okay. but yeah. All right, good. Okay. Great. Any uh, questions for Mr. Purdy by the staff, or by commission members or staff? <coughs> no. no. We'll, we'll open up the public. Uh, anyone wish to comment? Okay, um, seeing no members of the public on, uh, that wish to comment on this, then I think we can close this matter as a public hearing. This is probably something we can take up this evening and uh, as well. So, thank you. So that brings us then to item number 8, 165, 195 Main Street, Brantford, LLC. Kevin, Kevin Curry, Mr. Curry. And a special exception convenience store. Scurry, you ready to go for it? Got a microphone over here. You need to speak. You need a microphone. We'll grab a mic for the TV. Yeah, probably stand on that side, so that's where they like you to be. For the record, Kevin Curry, 165, 195, uh, 165-195 Main Street, LLC, and I purchased property recently from uh, the Pepe family. Like Larry is the uh, current tenant in there and has been a partner with the Pepe's for years. He'd just like to say a couple words first. Good evening, Larry Stout. Uh, I live at 13 Flat Rock Road Extension in Stony Creek. Um, I started out as an, an employee at Pepe Service Station 42 years ago. And I'm now currently the single owner of that business at 177 Main Street. Um, I'm looking to try and stay in business for a few months. Uh, Quite a while. I've got a younger employee that works with me that's got to put some more time in. And I have another gentleman that wants to carry on. He's getting older like I am. And he wants to carry on for a few more years himself. Um, I've been working with Kevin on this with the revitalization committee, giving them everything we possibly could to reconform this place and dress it up. It's looking pretty shabby and try to put it back in a really nice looking state of mind I should say here. Um, Kevin's willing to come in and 
replace gas tanks that need to be replaced. We're on extension right now with the state of Connecticut. Uh, he's willing to do all the cleanup, whatever it takes to do. Um, completely redo the building. Put a lot of new landscaping in. More so than I really think needs to be done, but because uh, it kind of like cuts down our parking issues a little bit. Um, and speaking of parking issues, uh, that's on the agenda here. Downsizing the business is one of my main things for retirement. We do not work on that many cars in this business during the course of the day. If at all, we probably work five to six cars a day. Those cars, three of them are inside the building, usually at all times. A lot of customers we have, I'll go pick their cars up, drop mine off, bring it back. Convenience. Um, the parking outside, we never really have too many extra cars around at all. Uh, like I said, we turn over, not very many cars left over from one day to the next. So as far as parking area, I, I really don't see a big concern there. Uh, like I said, years ago, it was a different plan, but now things have changed in the time. So. We've never used any on the street parking. And the whole time I've been there, 42 years, we've never parked one of our customer cars, employees' cars, or anything on the street at all. Um, the package store is not a real busy package store. With what Kevin's got in mind to do here is a small gas station with a small convenience store that's not really going to be like a super station like the 7-Eleven out east and places like that. It, uh, it's looking, to, like I said, to keep it small and keep the neighborhood to conform to the neighborhood. And uh, I've got, like I said, a few more years to go, and I would like to stay there. If this plan doesn't go through, I don't know what's going to happen. I really can't tell the future right now as far as Kevin, what Kevin's going to end up doing. I think I've covered just about everything I want to say. Thank you very much. Thanks, Larry. Uh, a couple things. Uh, we've been working with staff for the past year. We had a, a challenge with uh, the town center. We've kind of gone through. You can see the pictures in front of you here, the landscape. I mean, you probably don't even think it's the same building. And uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, dressing it up. We're, we are not changing the structure of the building at all. Either building, there's, there is two buildings, which makes this complicated. There's two buildings on one property here, and that's kind of where the parking calculations get uh, tangled up here. Uh, I just went by tonight, and I've been by last week. I came by during the day last week. There was a total of 11 cars on the site. I went by tonight. There's seven cars there right now with the package store open, with two at the package store. So that's all that's uh, outside there. And typically that's what it is. I've been servicing Larry's gas, uh, selling him gas for the past 10 years. And myself, I started as a mechanic, so I know how cars can breed in the repair shop. It's not a towing shop. There's not a bunch of junk laying around, and, uh, which is good. It works on commercial customers and you know, neighborhood customers. But uh, the parking is probably the biggest issue that we have here with the town regulations, um, you know, to try to mitigate it, they do many things where they do pick up the customer's cars. They, if need be, they come in together in carpool and working with the neighbors. I know uh, John next door, the, the, his people will park on our lot because he doesn't have any parking. So I'm good with that when people come in. Uh, the idea here is to reduce Larry's business and you know what we're looking to do is put basically the two bays is going to be a small convenience store uh, and basically what it does is it's a convenience store for the people that are going by we're not a trip generator we don't generate people we sell gas today we plan to sell gas after we have been approved by the zoning uh, board of appeals for a canopy uh, as you can see in the pictures and basically that will give some lighting uh, 
one of the things with the lighting is we've uh, requested a new photometric plan based on the town standards. They based it on full output of the lights, which are adjustable, and that we'll, we'll have that back to staff. We'll work with staff on that, um, getting that back. We just got our comments from staff a couple days ago, so that's first we uh, had to take care of that. Uh, the other items that are on here, another item that we just found out about was the landscape on the western property side. Either <coughs> we'll work with the staff to get some more <coughs> landscaping there or some uh, a waiver. As far as the sidewalks go, another concern, um, I know it came up last year before this commission with the neighboring property. There is no sidewalks going all the way down to Route 1 on the south side of Main Street from the condos. Um, property next door and all the way down. Um, there is sidewalks on the other side. We really don't have room for the sidewalks here. There's a grass strip uh, out in front. The state did take down a couple trees on the island here. We have them proposed to put in here. Obviously that's uh, a state issue which will go before the DOT. We did move the, at Harry's request, we moved the tree on the uh, western end of the property here off the state right away. So will go in there and some others going up the side which you can see in the other pictures um, so sidewalks are next to impossible to put in and what's there the sign um, we were just we worked a long time on a sign making it a monument sign with the uh, revitalization committee coming back removing the all the existing signs that are there we use the same square footage but we have to reduce that even further and we'll work with staff on that uh, a couple small items, dumpster enclosure, and some engineering cleanup, which the comments we just got. As far as the uh, traffic engineer, the traffic, the town engineer has uh, was okay with the plan with a couple exceptions and questions that he had. There's going to be less impervious material uh, area that will be open, so there's no drainage issues. We are reducing the um, western property here. That... Um, driveway will be closed down uh, to a st acceptable standards. The eastern one and the eastern one is going to be left where it is because we need to get the gas truck in there with the WB50 turning radius. On home place that one is going to be reduced also and increase in the landscape area at the signage if you, if you look on the um, site plan also you can see that and we are adding a loading space in some landscaping over on the other side of home place also. Um, so in addition to the parking, there will be a loading space. Our deliveries come at nighttime, so we do them off hour. Um, and one other thing as far as parking goes, with the convenience store, most of the people grab a coffee when they're getting gas. They grab, you know, a pack of cigarettes or a soda while they're getting gas. There's, you know, four more spots at the pumps also. So very rarely do we run into any traffic uh, issues in any of our sites. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we're, you know, as you can see, it's, you know, a great improvement to what's there. The gas tanks have to be replaced. Underground tanks have a life expectancy with the state. They have to come out. And that's kind of what drove this whole thing to this point. Thank you. Uh, Harry, do you want to go over the staff report? Yeah, some of the items are already addressed, um, but let me start out by saying the uh, after several meetings, uh, the town center uh, design review board um, did recommend approval of the design uh, with respect to how the uh, service station is going to be um, uh, rehabbed and the design of the new canopy. Um, so there's a report in the file about that. Um, rather than go over everything that was just mentioned, there are a lot of details here, but I'll just, the biggest um, issue at the moment, I think, is, of course, parking. Um, so according to the regulations, I appreciate what's been said by the applicant team, but we've got requirements in our regulation that we've got to cope with here. Um, and they add up to requirement for 34 spaces. Um, to allow this plan, you would need to reduce that 34 down to 16, so be a reduction of 18. Um, there are two possible ways to do that under the regulations. One would be um, if you go to page 5 of 5, well, it says 5 of 5, but it's really 5 of a larger number. Um, with the staff report, 
Uh, there is a section in the regs, section 6.5i, and it's called Modification of Parking Requirements. And it allows the commission by special exception to approve modification of parking if it finds that such modifications are being proposed with sites that historically have accommodated uses do not comply with the current parking standards, that such historical use patterns have not created any unreasonable risk to public health or safety. And assuming that is found to be the case, uh, provides for um, several evaluation standards. Um, at this point, none of them have been addressed in the application materials or verbally, as far as I know. Um, so they would need to be um, addressed, I think, before the commission could consider um, a reduction of parking requirements under that section. Um, the other possibility is actually getting into the zoning standards. I know we've talked, I think, even in other applications about the requirement of parking for service bays and uh, that came up with uh, the Subaru dealership and um, whether that's too much or not would need, could be looked at, but that would be a whole other process outside of this application that would possibly allow that number of 34 spaces to be dropped down. Um, so I think those are the two approaches. Um, so that's, a, I think, the major concern from the point of view of this application complying with the zoning regs. Um, I would stress on the lighting, um, it's significantly above what's allowed by the regs at this point. Um, in the past, um, I don't know if what you're proposing is to say the lights could be dimmed down to a level that complies, but what it, yeah, well, what typically happens is that the maximum level of the light is what's allowed under the regs, not a dimmable light that could go well over what's allowed in the regs. So I think probably have to adjust the uh, the lighting, actual fixtures and the arrays in there. Okay, okay. I'm sure we can work on well. That could be all worked out. So I think all the other items, uh, most of the details were mentioned. I won't get into all of that. Um, but it did provide calculations for the parking and all kinds of um, other information for you. Um, if there are any other questions, I'll just leave it there for now. Thank, thank you, Harry. Any questions from commission members? I mean, I, we don't have a parking plan. We don't have any plans for the site? Yeah. Harry has them. Did you not get them? I, I did not. They're not in our package. Oh, you should have got a reduced set. My apologies. Um, We've got unusual number of applications. We have 21 on each end, with like five or six. Uh, I apologize; those did not get to you. Um, I don't think well, we have copies here, but we'll get them out. So, so we can put this up on the board. I'm can gonna, I ask you a question? Sure. You're going to be running a service shop? No, I'm not going to be running. No, no, it's just no, service shop. Yeah. It's a serv it's service, service shop. shop. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I still will be there. So. So can you explain to me how that's going to work now? Is the convenience store going to go in one or two of the bays? Right. I'm so going to be losing two bays. I see. Which is, one of them I don't use at all anyway. Mm -hmm. The other one has got a big truck lift in it, which we're going to put in the other room. Okay. Okay. I don't work on cars that much anymore myself. No, I understand. The guys that work for me. That's why I'm just trying to keep those two guys busy so right. I don't need the extra space. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get. So I can walk you through this if you like. Um, it's essentially the plan you saw six months ago. Uh, in terms of the site plan itself, it's really. That didn't point out if there have been any changes. I don't believe there really have been. Um, so out here is Main Street. There's the existing Pump Island. Uh, the existing uh, service station is here. Uh, this is Home Place. Uh, the liquor store is in this location. And then behind uh, the liquor store and the service station is basically a paved area that would be laid out with uh, a few parking spaces that conform to the regulations. Right now it's sort of a unstriped area where people park. Um, I think back there you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces, one being a handicapped space and a loading space. Um, 
on the side of No, away from home place on the side of the property, sort of facing the abutting property on along Main Street. There's three parking spaces proposed. In front of the liquor store, there would be four with one handicap space. And some of this paved area would be a walkway, and they would try to recreate some of the, clean up some of the parking islands that are there. So some of those would be elongated, expanded. But there really isn't a whole lot you can do. It, the whole site is pretty much paved. This would reduce it a little bit. And in the front, over the gasoline pumps right now, there would be a new canopy. All right. So the concept is that we have four uses on here. It doesn't meet the parking requirements, but historically it's functioned. What you want to do is reduce the intensity of one of the uses, put an additional use in, and, and, and you think that's not going to generate any more traffic than what you're removing by removing two bays. Well, we're having, we're having the gas there now. Pretty yeah. much the same as everybody in town coming and using my air tunnel, which is free, mm -hmm. and walking up the parking lot, which this would probably it would even out is what it would do. I mean, as gas customers going in and out all day, I have customers that come in the shop. We would never have a problem with mm -hmm. parking issues. Right. Um, it's, it should, right. I can't see it changing that much with a small station like this. Like I said, it's not a big station. It's, it's just but you're going to be improving the station. Right. You're going to draw more traffic uh, for gas. And I'm sure that's I'd the like idea. I'd a little bit more gas yeah. than when I do. It's yes, of course. It's, it's, I know. I'm just trying to <coughs> rationalize the parking right. request. Right. Okay. I, I'd like to understand how it's u being used. You have three in the front that would be used that are, I just saw it from the, the aerial. So those three, would those be used by the service station or would those be used by the... Okay, that's what I wanted to answer, one of your questions with the pictures. And I do have other pictures without the uh, canopy and stuff, which we yeah. These are the ones I happen to grab today. No, it's so, fine. Uh, right now, there's four bays across the front in the office. Larry is going to maintain the two bays to the west, mm -hmm. and his office is going to go here, like I showed you on the picture, a very small office. There, there's a door there now. I understand that. So, yeah. And then the two bays are going to be Larry's. The other two smaller bays are going to be the convenience store. And the town center wanted them to look like garage doors. They won't be garage doors, but that's what I, they wanted I, them to look like. But, it's not my hands, but okay. So we agreed to do it. So, um, so basically, if you look at the building... You, you can see that the building was, there's additions on this all over the place. And the one big addition where the big wooden door is now is going to be a, um, that's a, uh, the two doors are going in there. Smaller doors straight in and out. And Larry will be down on that end of the building and have a very small office on the other side. Maybe I didn't phrase my question right. So you've got the pump parking and those three in front and then say 10 in the back. Yeah. The, the new... Um, convenience store is going to be accessed from the pump side of the building. Yes. So the pump and those three spaces are essentially going to be serving just the convenience store? The package store next door to the liquor store. Well, it seems like it's more, well, both. I'm, both. I'm trying to understand because it seems like there's not nearly enough parking in the front to service all the entries to the front as compared to the amount of parking in the back. So if if Larry can access his garage from the back, does it go all the way through? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he, he could take cars and maneuver cars to the back of his service stations when people are dropping off cars. He yeah. doesn't have to have That's to load happens. his base from the yes. front of the building. The employees park in the back. All the employees park in the back. And customers' cars, basically, they, they pull up, they drop them off, they move them around the back. Right. So essentially, you're keeping the front open for the use of either gas or the convenience store. And it seems to me that the the liquor store is more towards Home Street and more could more easily be accessed from the Home Street parking or the back. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because so, in my mind, I'm trying to separate. Now I want to think about the hours of use. Is the convenience store and the gas station hours open at the same time as the liquor store, or is there overlap, or are they separate hours? Um. Separate hours, they're, they're separate businesses, and it was listed in the application also there. If you look at it, Larry's basically with 7.30 to 5.00. Yeah. 
and um, the liquor store opens at 9, 9 to 9 now, regular hours, and then uh, the convenience store is open from uh, 5 a.m. to 9. So up until 9, the liquor store and the convenience store are up, so you're, you'll back off at 5.30, but during the day, you potentially have three uses open. But the convenience and the liquor store are always open at the same time. It, there's yeah, an well, office use too. I mean, it, it, there's an office use, a second floor. What's on the second floor? It, 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 well, it's a just vacant right now. We may put our own office in there. Okay, that's what we're looking at. And, right. But it's uh, basically what's what's in there now is just open office space. And there was an accountant in there before, and which had one or two cars at the most, and just used it as an office. And there was a guy that was a salesman that was on the road. He used it as an office. Um, the, our peak times in the convenience store are basically from probably, we open at 5, but usually it's like 7 to 9 is the busiest time. Good morning. Yeah, and then after work, 5 to 7 at night time, it's a Larry's close. So it goes flow pretty good with that. And uh, liquor store is busier on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But in the evening. Will you have dedicated parking spaces for the store? For the liquor store? No, for the convenience store. Over in front of the, if you look at the site plan here, there's it's three spaces. Like in the front right, right, they're all right in front of it. There's five over here that come in. They can pull in here in the liquor store. There's only one or two cars that ever at the liquor store at a time. And basically in the business, and I that's what I do, is uh, convenience stores, is the parkings at the pumps. They pull up to the pumps, they get gas, they go inside, they pay, they get a coffee, they grab their cigarettes, they grab the lotto. We have two questions. Chair Fred? I have two questions. <clears throat> Are there any other businesses in the town of Brantford that have a gas station, a convenience store, and a repair of a The one near um, the park is too. There is. There's at the corner of, uh, that, yeah, this is a good corner of Woodenville Hill Road Main Street. It doesn't have a convenience store, does it? It's yes. a tiny, tiny little convenience yes. store, yeah. 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 There isn't a liquor store there. No. I'll tell you that if I walk through the street. Get your missions done there. <laughs> the, yeah. um, the other question I have is how many employees are there between the uh, liquor store? The gas station and the convenience store. And the office, I guess. And the office. How many how many employees would be there full time on that property, not counting any customers? Well the liquor store has one. Okay. The convenience store gas station has one. And the office? Well the office when was there was one seven. two. Seven. Yeah. Well, yeah, well I'm it's just saying seven. so what's the number? Seven. Seven. So and we have how many spaces? 16. 18. 16. 16. 16. Yeah. So nine. It's work. Right now, there's the same things there. And you'd have, it's it's supposed up to 38 is what the regulations calls for today. What we're doing is actually less intensive than the regulations. Yeah. If you go by regulations, current and back then. Well, the other thing is I think um, the back area has been pretty much of a, you know, if you need to put a car that you're working on back there, there's no defined spaces now, so it's just as people can park or put cars. So that's one way it works, I think, too. I'm thinking of, like, the convenience store at exit 36, at exit 56, 53 at the Triangle. And, yeah. you know, how yeah. people park and use the pumps versus, you know, near the high school. You know, the companies is always... Overfilled versus whereas the other gas station um, going to East Main Street, you know, is less filled, and I don't I don't really know why that is, you know, whether it's something with the branding or if it's the size of the store, but you know I think, you know I know people tend to go to companies because the coffee is so cheap, and that tends to be a big driver for a lot of the parking in it. But you know I don't I can't say with any level. Assertion that that's why they have more patrons, 
or you know, or what's driving the amount of traffic given the number of pumps. But you know, I'm just trying to think of the various stations and you know, so that's one of the questions I have is does the size of the community sort of drive the traffic? Right. Mr. Kirk. Yeah, I am in that business and the number of dispensers, we're gonna have two. Companies okay. has six to eight. That's okay. a big difference. Okay. Food service in the store, huge difference. Co branding, if it's got a Dunkin' Donuts in there. Those are the things that really drive traffic in the convenience store. We're nowhere in that league at all. Okay. This is a small neighborhood convenience store, you know. Two four pumps. Two. Two pumps. Four four fueling positions. Okay. And that's what you actually have three now, right? You have three. Yeah, yeah four. There's four there now, but they're the new ones are multi product. So okay. And then you're so you're not selling food in the convenience store. What do you what would be Just, sold? It'll be all you know. They'll, they'll, they sell the prepackaged. Uh, it's grab and go. It's yeah, not Dunkin' yeah, Donuts. Right. It's not. T typically in a convenience store, it's what you're going to consume in the car: chips, soda, um, lottery, cigarettes, coffee. Um, like in the morning, they sell the, the Danish. Danishes, the little all prepackaged. No. Um, like, no. is there a hot, a hot thing with the rolling hot dogs or anything? I don't. Know. They. they you know, I'm I mean, you can't to think. eat them when they sit there all day. That's my feeling. <laughs> so we we don't have them in our stores. I'm not to say we won't, but I don't. I don't believe right. in them. You know. And Ms. Kerr, do you have an existing? Store that uh, elsewhere in the state that yeah, several of, I, I have yeah. several of them. I do have you had asked a question about foot repair shops in them. Um, a lot of them that we've bought have been from older clientele that downsized their business. We have one in Windsor that has two pumps, and there's a, a garage in the back of it. And the guy actually, very similar to this, was the guy was there for 30 years. And on his 70th birthday, he sold it, and then he, his uh, staff took over. Well, is there one there if someone wanted to look at one or something? Is there one that we could look at? You'd say it would be close. Or, I mean, I mean, this is unique because you got a liquor yeah. store and an office in, in addition yeah, to it. It's um, there's none of the liquor store. I can tell you that. Right. And it's uh, um, I don't think if I have anything with two buildings on it. I got a couple in Wallingford. East Center Street, Wallingford, Main Street, Wallingford. I got a couple there, but there's okay. nothing with uh, two uses. I mean, two uh, buildings. Sure. You got you to realize that I think take a little consideration that this site's been in, in operation for a lot of years, and it's been working. All right, so they're going to be downsizing the repair area, <clears throat> upgrading the gas area, but it's still basically the same pattern. And I know we've got to wrestle with this parking issue situation. I know it's in the regulations or whatever, but you know, I look at this and I don't, I don't see nothing different than in downtown Brantford, in the center of Brantford, where we have a lot of businesses there and always struggling for parking. And it's, it's far more dense in the center of town, if you really look at it, than, than this site. And this site's been working. So, I mean, I know we have to deal with the parking situation, but. It's been in operation for a lot of years. We should ought to consider that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously, downtown there's off street public parking. And that's, and, and I'm looking at one of the ways that we can approve this the criteria is to reduce on site employee parking by provision for off site employee parking. Have you looked into that at all? We, Larry and I talked about that the other day, and they do share. We have like Shelley's next door, they park good parties over. Can you do that? Yeah, I, I mean, get some the employee parking to park in the Richland right. across the street, so you'd have to contact the Richland owner, and because this right. would be something we'd right. have to run with exactly. the land. And, yeah, I don't know, something to look into. But I think, <clears throat> I mean, to Joe's point, I, I, I've driven by, I drive past this place sometimes several times a day yep. and I've, I've never seen what I would consider parking stress right. on the site and I think probably you, we can't just say parking because there is a duration to parking nobody goes into the liquor store and hangs out nobody goes into a gas station and hangs out these are sort of like very transactional and very 
I wouldn't say instantaneous, but you 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 come you do your you do your transaction and you get going. You're not there for the experience or for the a shopping thing. <clears throat> no, no, I I agree. My my sense and what do I know is is that this is when I consider the Pepe's place, it's more of a car repair place. You don't go there for gas. Your your prices are too high. Uh, full it's, service. It's, Look it's at the service. It's full service, and, and so you don't. So what you're proposing is a, a change that is going to get a lot more cars in because you're going to be competitive, and I assume you are, and and, and you you are going to get more vehicles, and they are going to stop. So that's the difference by adding that new use yep. to the site. That, in my mind, I agree. But the use is going to be at the pumps, and it's sure. not it's not going to be crazy use right. at the pumps. You know, they're going to, like I say, they're going to pull to the pumps. They're not going to pull in. We're saying they're going to, they pull in, they're going to pull in, they're going to leave. They're going to grab right. their coffee, no, they're going to go. That's so true. it's not long term, and the timing of the busy times and the peak times between all the businesses work. And I think that's one of the, that one of the avenues in there to look at, um, the, you know, working to peak uh, traffic hours. At the same time, we, if there's any, anybody like me, if I see something in the words, there's two or three cars in the way and i got to wait to do that, I'm just going to drive right by. I'm not even going to stop. If I see the place is full and it, there's not, it can't, I can't fit in there with a car, I'm just, I'm going to just keep going, go to the next station or next whatever. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's, and that's, that's, that's what my we do feeling, see. We do feeling. see that in all the stations like that where it's, so, it, mean, and that's why they're called convenience. So I can only hold so many cars and then after that it's overflow and people are not going to, if you can't stop <clears throat> on the property, if you're going to stay in the middle of the street to wait to get in the driveway, it, it's not worth it. You just keep going. There's a lot of gas stations in town, that's for sure. I, th I think if Most of them are I think if you can keep the service business to the rear of the building, that's important because you're it's it's fortunate. I think if you keep the service to the rear of the building, I think it's fortunate that you've got multiple sides of the building to use for parking and service. So, like, I don't think of the front of the building as the liquor store use. I think as of Home Street as the liquor store side of it. And then I think of the rear. Yeah, and so that's helping me organize what they're saying, you know. But Chuck is very is right when he's saying that you're going to be more competitive in your, in your gas pricing, so there is going to be more traffic in that respect. But I think it's going to level off because of just the fact that if it yeah, reaches capacity, your people are going to move on to, a, to another site. They're going to go somewhere else. One other item that we're doing, this picture shows it good here. You can see the parking. Larry doesn't use that door at this point on the western end of the building. So that would be his entrance down there. And it's not striped and lined on that side either. So when you do have to find spaces, and believe me, it drives me crazy in some of my businesses where if there's not a spot to park by the door, people don't want to walk two steps away. I know. So you got to have that spot by the door when a person pulls in, they want to park there. And their job, they move the cars around the back or inside because there's, right. there's a lot of room inside. How many doors do you have facing now that are your usable overhead doors that are used for your repair shop now? Four, four in, in the front. That's facing in the front. And one in the back. One in the back. I'm, I'm talking three about the front. The front, front. The front four, you have four, four three, doors across. Three. Four. There's four in the front. Four two. Over, oh, oh, the big one is... Uh, overhead doors. It's three yeah. doors. In the three overhead yeah. doors. And you're going to reduce it to one. Two. Well, two. Well, so, looking at the parking requirements, you've got five service bays. You said you weren't using one of them. So you we're actually talking lifts inside the building, not just the doors. Yeah. And then you've got to go down to three. Yeah. Three actual lifts, service areas. So two in the front, space. one in the back. Yeah. Right. Usable doors, overhead right. doors. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, if not, I'm going to open up the public. Any members of the public wish to comment on this? Yes, sir. Just grab a mic. Thank you. I've a uh, 61 home place. 
uh, it's actually 12 years ago we started looking at this. Really. Um, I said it then, I'll say it again. Best mechanic in Branford, uh, Larry. Always took my cars there, and um, I'm not scoring points, but uh, 44 years I worked for my company, 22 in the UK and 20 in the USA. And I've lived in home place for 20 years. And to my knowledge, nobody has rented those offices except for occasional art displays. When someone buys a business, they don't buy it just to improve it. They buy it to make money. So you're going to see a lot more people and a lot more traffic going through that building. Personally, a lot of the plants can disappear because they're just blocking the view when you leave home place. The trees were took down by the state and the views were improved. The cars that come around the corner from uh, Route 1 are driving too fast. And this parking thing is a disaster. If they're going to put people into those office spaces, which that's what they're going to do, there is going to be at least four more vehicles. At the front of the building, outside the liquor store, I think it's four spaces, and three at the far end. Nobody's going to pull up to a convenience store and use those three spaces. There's one way in and one way out, and the pumps are in the middle. So, as I said, it's a disaster. Um, the convenience store is due to open at 5 a.m. in the morning. So the LED lights are going to be going on at 5 a.m. and off at 9 a.m. I didn't buy a house to live near a lighthouse. That's what it's going to be like. The artist impression that you saw is nothing like reality. Nobody would have a gas station next to a park. We already have to deal in home place with Shelley's. We accept that can't do anything about it. What we can do about this is fight it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Seeing none, uh, I believe that uh, we should, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Curry, do you, are you okay with continuing this or how do you, how do you want to proceed? I, I think there's a number of items that are sort of outstanding and just recently got the staff. I'm okay, board. whatever you guys want to do. I mean, the public, this is more technical stuff we have left. Not, not much is going to change here. If you want to close the public hearing, I'm good with it. I, I want to keep it open to allow you to address this parking. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And it, one thing is that he said there's only one way in, one way out. There's four entrances and egresses on this property. Okay. And it's uh, just so we have that. And I understand you, you said you just got the staff report, so I understand you haven't seen all these things. Well, but but this Monday, is the, cri <laughs> the, the, the criteria of that we have to find, so there has to be some basis for that. And so, all right, okay. So we'll continue this matter as a public hearing uh, to our January twenty third meeting. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. So that brings us to items number. Uh, 9 through 15, which all relate to 99 Todd's Hill Road, resubdivisions and uh, special exceptions for interior lots. Uh, so, Mr. Preddy, you're ready to proceed on that? Ready for soil engineering. Uh, that's 99 Todd's Hill Road, which is uh, outlined in red here. Um, the property is about 37 acres in total, um, with a couple of small ponds. At least this one, I believe, was man made. That one may not have been. Um, this is Parish Farm Road, Todd's Hill Road, Cherry Hill Road. It's the Orient here. Um, Cosgrove Court Subdivision is right across the street here. Um, the proposal is for 15 lots. No new road construction. They will all be either fronted on one of the existing roads or uh, accessed through a private driveway. Um, so there are a number of rear lots. Um, all the lots we believe meet uh, all the bulk standards. Uh, they're 20,000 square feet or more on the, on the frontage and 30,000 or more on the rear lots. Um, 
we have been to wetlands. This plan originally had 16 lots um, in, in conversation, uh, you know, presentations with, and back and forth with wetlands. We actually withdrew and resubmitted 15 and removed one of them. Um, so we have, we have shortened this plan up somewhat um, from what was originally proposed. Um, what we, with the removal of these lots, the rest of this property will be dedicated as open space where 10% is only required. Uh, however, we're going to be do uh, dedicating about 25 acres of the 37 as open space. Um, there has been interest from both the RWA, who is the adjoiner to the north, and the land trust. So um, the recipient of the open space is um, um, not hammered out yet, but be that as it may, as part of this, the subdivision, the dedication is going to be about 25 acres. Um, we have also been to WPCA. Uh, we presented this back in, uh, I believe it was November. Um, we are uh, doing a small um, extension of the sewer on Todd's Hill Road and then behind these lots. Um, and there's an extension from Avon over here for these lots and for, and for, and for these two lots. Uh, the WPCA has approved the layout um, with the condition that the capacity study be done by their consultant and as long as the capacity wasn't an issue then they were okay with it and we did get that back last week and there is no uh, capacity issue at the pump station downstream or the receiving sewer um, so as far as they're concerned um, it's approved for um, WPCA for subdivision each lot will obviously have to have a connection agreement um, uh, the comments regarding that was that w where we show 10 foot wide easements, they were like 15 foot wide easements, but that's not an issue. Um, we can accommodate that. Uh, the town engineer, e each lot, and, and again, because we're not doing a road, we don't have uh, formal drainage uh, improvements proposed here. So we're looking to waive that requirement as well. Uh, each lot will have its own individual uh, stormwater storage area for, again, the final roof design. These are pretend. Uh, possible houses that we're showing on here. Um, final house design will dictate the roof area and thus the size of the uh, stormwater storage area. Uh, lost my uh, there was another comment from the town engineer about adding some curbing along the frontage on, of these lots on Paris Farm Road, which we would accommodate. There's three things. Um, uh, in any event, the 15 uh, houses, there's only 14 new. One is the existing house, which we cut out. I think you covered it all. Right? I think so. That's, that's the, yeah. um, I think I covered all the items that the town engineer had. So uh, part of the wetland approval was that all but four of these lots in the existing house will need to actually go back as individual permits uh, because they're within the 100 foot <coughs> buffer in, in most cases. Um, two wetlands, uh, so this will, those lots will actually will have another round of reviews uh, by the wetland commission. Really, all of it in a nutshell. So, so all the uh, on the on the on the plan you're showing here, all the area that aren't lots is the open space that's going to be deeded to whomever the one you haven't decided yet. But right. it's right. Correct. Okay. Basically, all of this area. Uh, a lot of it is wetlands, but um, right. if you've been by here, it's been mowed historically over years, so it's all walkable. Um, so it's wetlands that's been mowed. It's been mowed as long. Most of this whole area has been mowed for years. This area was a cornfield um, over the years, but this is all. Um, so it's been designated based on soils. Soil types. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a recent. This delineation is pretty. Is it? Yeah, just within the so last year. So it's just year. done, right? So, no people were aware it was a wetland actually. Yeah. Um, some of these were a surprise, truthfully. Um, yeah, I've never. And, and I don't really understand the language, but the wetland scientists said that these were 
Um, she said they were on the edge. They were very young wetlands. Um, it may have been due to a groundwater change in the last 10 or 20 years, but um, the, the, the stuff in the back was uh, older wetlands. I'm not a soil scientist, so I can't really speak to that. The fact that the, you don't have the plant, the vegetation is concerning that it would be flagged. Yeah, I mean, some states are soil based, some states are plant based, some are a combination. Yeah, no, I, I believe there's I, three separate criteria yeah. that require it to be. But there are, there are scattered around um, ornamental trees that have been planted by the estate over the years, and mm -hmm. kind of here and there. There's a fence that goes around it now. I, guess, I, think, I think it's been mistaken as a park <laughs> over the years of why well, there's a fence. Yeah. Some of the lots have some pretty, like five and six have some pretty steep slopes. Um, yeah. Twelve and uh, a half. Oh, well, the ones off of Parish Farm Road. Yeah, the last a couple two. Of steep slopes. Um, the other houses on Parish Farm Road are similar to that, but the ones that exist over here, they kind of drop down off the road. Uh, this would be walkout. This house would be a walkout basement. So, but uh, the the plans you're looking at, keep in mind that these are one foot contours because we, oh, okay. we use the um, the 88 uh, datum contours that were provided to the town from the GIS company, so okay. they're recent, uh, to, uh, the last couple of years. So that's what we use here. Uh, and the background contours were one foot contours, so we just continued that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just looking at the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I think the driveway is only 12%, so it's not. It says 12 and a half. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Jim. Anything else? Uh, we've got covers on. Harry, any uh, summaries you'd like to provide us? Sure. Um, let me just go back to the park comment. Um, this application, somewhat similar to Leeds Island Road, in that you've got a number of, uh, in this case, many more rear lots. Uh, no common driveway, but um, you've got a special exception process for the, uh, the rear lots. Um, again, a lot of the regulations that would typically apply to special exceptions are, you know, problematic at best in terms of trying to apply them to a single family house, like landscaping. So I assume, again, requesting a waiver for That's landscape correct. requirements and preparation of a landscape plan by a landscape architect. Um, again, similar reason, I mean, there is a lot of existing uh, park-like plantings, let's say, on the property that would, you know, uh, could be viewed as excellence in landscaping. Well, there, isn't a, there isn't a need to go in here and clear cut. I mean, each lot would be built as they're sold, so only that lot would be disturbed one at a time. But um, it could trees could be selectively cut as needed for the houses. There's no reason it's not a forest. You, know, you have to go down and mow all the trees down. Well, it would, yeah, it'd be nice to know where the uh, individual trees are since it's pretty much wide open. Um, we can handle that when we deal with each lot. I mean, there's okay. a, it would be a lot to do all at once. You know. Just, yeah, it doesn't really matter until you know what's right. being affected, but it would be nice to know that. Um, there is a report you received in your packet. Um, we did not do, actually, we do have individual reports, but essentially we sent you one rather than six for all the, uh, the different lots that require a special exception for the material lot requirement. Um, most things are fairly similar. Um, again, this was done by our departing assistant planner. Um, on the cover, he's noted the differences in the lots in terms of the driveway length, slope, lot size. Um, so that being said, um, all the lots do meet the requirements in the regulations, the mentioned requirements for our interior rear lots. Um, the landscaping waiver again could look at whether you know want to identify some of the larger trees and that could be a requirement prior to a, z a zoning permit or a building permit being issued each lot that the trees of 12 inch caliber and so forth be identified as uh, to be preserved unless they need to be removed for the placement of the house and so forth um, parking requirements are met i mean there's a Proposed condition about lighting because it's a single family house, it's not an issue. Um, grading changes are shown. Um, again, drainage and stormwater. Um, when I get to proposed conditions, there is a uh, condition about uh, low impact development. Uh, 
requirements or recommendations to handle runoff from the roof and so forth. Uh, this was sent for referral to the Regional Water Authority and they had a couple of comments um, which I have included in some proposed conditions. Um, again, they were looking at um, directing stormwater uh, runoff from the, uh, the roof and so forth uh, um, into areas where it can be infiltrated into vegetated areas. Um, if the residents, they said, it to be heated with fuel oil, they are recommending it be stored above ground um, and that fuel storage tanks and associated equipment in the basement should be segregated from floor drains and sump pumps. Um, and their exact comments are in uh, attachment to the staff report. So I think I covered all of them, but check here. Yeah, they talk about the wetlands, but that's really a comment um, that's covered by the wetlands approval. Um, I don't think I covered that. So essentially, the requirements for a special exception process are met. Um, staff and the engineering departments are recommending addition of a 20-foot um, site triangle. Um, for all driveway intersections with the, the connecting roads. Um, and as was mentioned in the wetlands is approved their applications associated with this. So I do have um, similar to Leeds Island Road, a consolidated uh, recommendation uh, for the special exceptions for those six, which you could uh, consider I think and um, probably vote on together should you get to that point. Um, so I can pass that out. It's very similar to the, um, the recommendations for Leeds Island Road uh, in terms of the findings about the uh, drainage calculations, um, landscape requirements, um, road control measures. Um, can we just pass this out so you have it in front of you? Is that the subdivision one? Um, the special no, the special I have the special exception. I don't have the subdivision. There was, there was the other one. Shift over the subdivision for a second. Um, there is a staff report also in your packet about that. And because it's a re-subdivision, it's also uh, subject to public hearing. So I think we're having a public hearing on all the applications together. Um, Again, this is prepared by our departing assistant planner. Um, the proposed lots will meet all the bulk requirements. Um, as was mentioned, almost 25 acres to be set aside as open space. Uh, one of the requirements of subdivision regulations is to actually designate what entity will take it. So at this point, with the Regional Water Authority and the Land Trust being a possible candidate, both being possible candidates, uh, it's not quite ready, I think, for action by the commission because we need to identify and be sure that the uh, entity uh, being proposed accepted is submitted something in writing saying they will accept it and voted to do that. So that is definitely nailed down. Um, so essentially all the other requirements are met. No sidewalks are depicted as to be required in the, the uh, recent plan of conservation development adopted by the commission. Um, Again, 25-foot site triangle requirement with adjoining roads. Um, a lot of these are redundant requirements. The uh, action by the WPCA was mentioned already. Um, and I mentioned the comments by the Regional Water Authority. Same comments, plugged to the subdivision. Um, a couple of comments by the town engineer have already been mentioned previously by the app, by Mr. Preddy. Um, underground utilities. Uh, the fire department, I believe, has looked at this um, and the driveway access providing turnaround suitable for fire and emergency service equipment. Uh, we need to identify fire hydrants. That hasn't been, not been done yet. Um, and there are a couple items that would need to be added to the uh, actual subdivision plan itself. 
One is being lot markers on all the corners uh, as required by the regulations and the open space and uh, the correct signature block. Uh, so at this point, staff's recommending the public hearing for the subdivision be continued to allow uh, further information about who's uh, going to be designated to take the open space to be submitted. Do you expect you'd know that by the next meeting? I would hope so. <laughs> um, I didn't, I wasn't aware that that would hold this up. I was kind of, uh, thought that may be a conditional kind of thing. The open space will have to get dedicated regardless. Um, the recipient to be determined, but um, if that's, if you can't act until that's decided, then so be it, I guess. Okay. And that's the way I read the regulations. Um, so I could go back um, over the findings conditions for the special exceptions, if you like, or again, again we could wait until we... Uh, we can wait. Cameras. I mean, you're okay with them? Uh, yeah, generally they were fine. Yeah, none of, none, of, none of these were an issue, and as long as the landscape requirements are waived for the interior lots, then, okay. then the rest of it's all okay. 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 Any questions? If not, let's open up to the public. Members of the public wish to comment on these items. Again, we're talking about items 9 through 15, the special exceptions for lot 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 13, and then the resubdivision itself. Mr. Horn. Uh, Bill Horn, 246 Pleasant Point Road. Um, the Land Trust has been considering this. Um, it's taken, I think, longer than our usual time to look at it, um, in part because we've had trouble arranging to get members of the acquisition committee on the property to do a, a direct inspection, which is one of the things that we have to do. Um, I've been talking to both the Conservation Commission and the Community Forest Commission because 25 acres of mowed lawn is a lot for the land trust to be taking on and not typical of what our mission is. And I think I have general agreement from both those commissions that they would cooperate with the land trust in turning this into a pollinator pathway site, which is a project that they're just kicking off, where we would uh, probably do meadow around the perimeter, uh, keep trees away from the existing and planned houses so we don't have to deal with concerns about falling limbs or things like that. And then uh, maybe introduce some, um, some different species of trees and, and uh, wetland tolerant shrubs into the wooded area to try to get a more varied, varied habitat. Um, but at this, at this point, the land trust hasn't really um, reached a position where we could, we could take a vote on it and if we can get access to the property. I, I think the holidays were part of the, part of the problem. Uh, we have to, the family has to let us in, basically, in order for us to go on. So that's where things stand for the land trust. Is any of the budding land open space or is it also private or is it just the other side of the street? Um, it's, it's not water company property. It's is it water company. Is it water company? Yeah, property? and the, the land trust owns a small parcel at the end of I forget the name of the street. It's a cul-de-sac off of uh, off of Valley Brook South. And um, other than that, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of protected land there in the sense that Class One and Class Two land is protected and is maintained as open space. So um, it's not accessible to the public generally without a permit, and if there aren't any trails there, you wouldn't get a permit. Okay. Thank you. Yes, uh, sir. Uh. Hi, my name's Rick Vaughn, 74 Todd's Hill Road, Brantford. Um, I've been at uh, 74 Todd's Hill Road for about 35 years or so. Um, I was kind of interested in the comment about the uh, inland waterlands excuse me, the in, inland wetlands there, uh, feeling that there were a new area there. That, I've been there for years and I've seen this pond, I've seen the adjacent area that's up against the water company property, and you know that wetlands have been in existence for more than 15 or 20 or 30 years. Um, the property up there is pristine. It's a beautiful piece of property. Ducados Grove has always maintained it lovely. Um, I realize this is probably going to be a done deal. I just want to make sure it's done correctly in the sense of the traffic flow on Todd's Hill and Parish Farms Road now with the, uh, the recent uh, 
buildings on Cosgrove Way uh, as added traffic. People fly up and down. There used to be uh, traffic signs at the corner of Todd Hill and Parish Farms uh, coming up from Main Street. And at the other end, it just would slow down traffic somehow, uh, just to make it safe for the kids that are in the neighborhood, the animals, uh, and cars coming in and out on the Todd Hill Road now uh, are taking their lives at hand. So hopefully that's something that will be looked at. Um, I guess also the drainage system that is going to be in place there that is going to impact the houses. There's quite a bit of water in sitting up high. Um, there's issues in the cellars in many of the houses up there. So that's something that needs to be considered. Um, I hope that the vegetation that would be put in place would be appropriate. Now, it's unfortunate that sidewalks won't be put in, um, but I guess that's what keeps happening here in Cranford. Um, again, this process does go through. I just hope it goes through the right way and not just uh, rush through because of um, the people that are having this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to come? Um, Susan Keyes, I live at 66 Todd's Hill Road. I kind of want to reiterate a little bit what Rick, my neighbor, said in that we have dealt, I've been there 25 years, um, I've dealt with water issues for many years. Um, a number of years ago, I spent $8,000 putting in a basement waterproofing system. I still get a lot of water in my yard. I have found the soil to be very hard, very clay-like, um, I think which is one reason for all the water problems that, that, that I have at my property. The other issue is the traffic. Um, they did take a stop sign away at the bottom of Parish Farm Road a number of years ago. Just recently on Thanksgiving, I had a car totaled. Uh, a guest was at my house, parked across the street, well off the roadway, come flying down Parish Farm Road. Luckily, nobody was sitting in the car, but her car was totaled. I've watched cars go into the stone wall at 65 Todd's Hill Road, heard it, looked out the window, seen it in a stone wall. It's a real problem. With the addition of 30 houses in a short stretch of road, I just want to make sure that those things are addressed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello, I'm John Steady. We live at 5 Parish Farm Road, and I would say the same thing about the traffic. We live, um, if you know anything about Parish Farm Road, it's a very long straightaway, and then there's a very sharp drop hill. We live at the top of the drop hill, and it looks like there's going to be some proposed driveways on that, coming off of that hill and right on the crest of that hill. Um, I think if you talk to the Brantford Police Department, they have been up there um, at least a half a dozen times. Um, closing the road in snowstorms because they can't keep it clear and bringing in public works. Cars crashing off the side, cars crashing through our neighbor, through our yard. We've had at least two crashes into our yard off of that hill because people are flying down that road. So adding driveways coming off of that particular section right there seems like um, they're getting out of their driveway is going to be a suicide mission um, with the way people drive down that street. So that would be my my number one concern for those houses and the driveways getting put in. Thank you. Any other members of the public wish to comment? Uh, Mr. Preddy, do you have any, uh, a number of the neighbors that are concerned about drainage issues? I, I don't know if this I, is. I, I can answer some of these. Um, so. This whole property basically drains toward these ponds, so I don't believe that we're adding any drainage issues to the roadway at all. Uh, basically, all of the streets. Um, in fact, the conversation I also had with Tom here, he felt the same thing. Um, we, we didn't need to do any drainage improvements because we're not adding any drainage to the front of the road. Um, I don't know why, the, I've often wondered myself why the, the traffic the stop sign was not. A, bottom of the parish farm. Um, um, it sounds like a, a, another good question for the town engineer. Um, as far as the, you know, keeping up with the snow, I mean, it's, I think it's a public works issue. Um, um, the uh, basement water, I mean, none of these are, um, none of these lots will have enough relief in them so that they're going to be gravity drained anyway, so they're all going to need some pumps. Um, pretty typical. Uh, the, the soils are tough here, I agree. Um, we experienced that across the street. Um, so when we do the on-site 
uh, storage here, we're, we're going to have to excavate material out and um, in the area that's required and bring in some stonier stuff for and build, literally build rain garden type setups to be able to store the water. Um, Uh, wetland area. I was not suggesting at all that that all these wetlands were new. Um, my only comment was to this one little finger here that um, the soil scientists seem to think that that was um, newer than the rest. Um, I have a question. Sure, Ms. Marcy. So one of the comments had addressed the number of driveways coming down the end of parish, but yet you've got the septic coming in a spine. You've got 43, six lots off of that spine where the the septic is, or the sewer's coming in. Why did you not propose a road and then that would have alleviated at least two of the, the driveways off that corner? So rather than have the two long tail flag lots for five and six, I think they are, why not just build a, a road where you're bringing in the sanitary line anyway? because you're going to be excavating to bring in the sanitary line there. Generally, and you have six lots on a cul-de-sac, that could be a nice little street, um, rather than just individual lots all over the place. Generally speaking, the town doesn't like um, short little dead ends like that. It's more maintenance for the public works and stuff to take care of. And, um, now, we are required to have frontage for these lots. That's not to say that a, a driveway couldn't be possibly worked out. Um, in common on the side over here, um, but um, we're, again, we're not proposing any uh, roadway uh, improvements, uh, new roads, anything like that. We're trying to keep this uh, as low development as we can. Basically, um, uh, there are only there are three driveways that are proposed um, out on, on that section of Parish Farm that. Um, oh, you mentioned because you got the corner. Uh, the one out at the, at the bottom, I agree. Um, are, are there any sight line issues for entry and exit? Um, this, is, so this this continues to go up, and so I mean it depends on how far you want to go. You know, we're not for residents you're usually not required. It's not like a DOT driveway. You're not usually required to go hundreds and hundreds of feet. Um, so, you, but you can see. Um, uh, for a couple hundred feet this way, and when, when you get down here, I mean, this is more intersection control coming up, so it's not as coming up the hill is not as uh, the same kind of concern. Could is that you can check that out, right? You can see that if the average traffic is going at a certain speed, that you need this much sight distance. Right. There are there are guidelines in the DOT. Manuals, right. Yes. Can can you check that? I mean, we can absolutely. Okay. Um, we can. Provide sightline distances. Yeah, uh, make sure it's safe. Yeah. 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 yeah, so that can be so it's not a problem. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little confused about the town not liking short cul de sacs when you've got common driveways, you, you start to allow up to four. So it seems when we reach that four lot threshold, we're getting to, you know, where it's no longer considered short, and this would be six. I mean, I know it's more expensive, but given the, what I'm hearing, it seems like it's a little more prudent from a design standpoint. Well, whether it's preferable or not, I mean, we have standards. So, I mean, if you look at the site distance requirements and assuming all those are met for all the driveways proposed, um, it's hard to say no if you have something in front of you that meets the regulations. We don't have a lot of, there's not a lot of wiggle room, frankly, for discretion. Or say that that meets the regulations or that the... No, this layout? Yeah. Yeah, assuming it does. No. In terms of the site distance, I mean, I'm, that's the only thing I've heard that we don't well, have any information on at the moment. Um, I don't know, I just like to look you, at you things, from, two different it, things like, from a whole concept, not from a... No, I understand that, yeah. You, know. yeah. you mentioned two different things, common driveway and town road. Well, right, so I mean, I, I, mean, I might not have the regulation memorized precisely, but you know, there's, you know, you've got like multiple driveways where you can have flag lots, there's no access and it seems like it, the limit of that is at around four or two and two with the sight lines 
and it seems like that regulation was written because it said beyond that, you know, number of flag lights, there's really no reason not to have a street. So when you had said, you know, we don't like short streets, to me, my, I'm thinking that the threshold would be four lots makes a short street. Six is, I mean, I live on a house, on a yeah, street with yeah. six lots. So there's another one six. It's, stuff, it's, yeah. it's a really nice street to have. Right, right. And, you know, so I, I don't consider that a short section. And, you know. No, I understand. I, I don't disagree that it'd be nice to live on a, you know, a short a, street with six houses. Uh, it's just been my experience over the last couple of town engineers and public works uh, directors that right. it's not favorable. It just seems like we're starting the subdivision process by not looking at the traditional subdivision. And we're just looking to create lots, you know. You know, do you do a U across and, and have lots fronting on a U? I mean, there's lots of things that could have been considered. Any, any other questions or comments from commission members? My sense is we should keep them both open because for the special exception, the sight line issue and the resubdivision, we don't know who's going to get the open space. Right. And you can maybe look at, so, so, uh, I think the drainage, the public concerns are maybe the drainage traffic. <coughs> um, you know, maybe you could ask about the stop sign. Why was that taking away? I don't know. Right. Or, is it, or what is the process to get it back or something like that? Um, uh, probably a combination of the town engineer and police department. Right. Maybe between now and the next hearing, just check, I don't know, just ask them, see, see what they think. Okay. See if there's a rationale why it was taken away. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, great, thank you. So we will continue these matters as a public hearing. I think that is it for to, to the next meeting, Tuesday next meeting, okay. our January 23rd meeting. So that concludes our public hearings uh, for public hearing portion of the meeting. And at this point, maybe we can bring up some of the old stuff. So we need to bring up the, uh, the 292 Leeds Island Road. That was the uh, one. Uh, Harry, I think you, did you hand us the? Uh, yeah, it should have two memos uh, with recommendations. One right. uh, for the special exception applications, one for the resub division. Take a couple minute break for clearing sure. the room. Sure. Why don't we? Uh, we'll, we'll take a, uh, a few minutes break and uh, allow the room to clear.
Okay, I think we're back on. So we're going to take up some of the items, uh, our public hearing items. First was the 292 Leeds Island Road uh, applications. There was numbers three, four, five, and six on the agenda. And here I am trying to, I know you passed out for us the, uh, the revised staff recommendation for that. And there were two of them, right? So there was the... One on special exception and one on the subdivision. subdivision. Right. And the subdivision. Okay. So, does everyone remember remember these? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, this this was our second public hearing on this. Uh, the mm -hmm. interior lots. Uh, there was some neighbor that had a drainage concern. It sounds like they went out to the site. They addressed it, and uh, it sounds like we're complies with regulations. Mm -hmm. and that we can uh, move forward again we're not going to approve apparently one of them because uh, because of because the because this common driveway serving more than two lots needs a special exception approval so we just received an application tonight for that and also an application to modify the subdivision application should you approve it <laughs> um, to add the third lot back uh, okay so so then what one, uh, I'm looking at our agenda, three. item number three. Lot three, so if you went to agenda item five would be the one um, I would suggest you just table okay. until um, the first meeting of February. To the, okay, so we're out Sixth, I believe. February sixth. Sixth, I believe. Okay. Okay, so now then, uh, and does it matter what order we do these in? I guess we can do the special exceptions first. Yeah, I'd suggest right. that. I mean, I propose conditions on the special exceptions requiring um, saying they're void unless subdivision's approved and filed, and another condition on the subdivision saying that uh, the special ex exception approvals would need to be filed before okay. the is filed. Okay, so then let's take up items number three and four, uh, and that's on the memo that you provided for the special exceptions, is that, or that's for lots one and two? Correct. Right. Is there anything, have you, you've already reviewed these, or do you want to go over any of these? Yeah, let me just go over it quickly. Um, we, I talked about the findings. Um, and you recall that uh, we just talked about the waiver requests for landscaping and the landscape architect preparation of the landscape plan. Um, the conditions are pretty typical. Um, Merge control measures before uh, start construction. Uh, number two would require several things to be done um, prior to the issuance of a building permit. Um, so they would be starting on page two, provide a site triangle for the intersection of Leeds Island Road and the main driveway. Uh, stormwater drainage structures and grading revisions to the satisfaction of the town engineer. A uh, little wording change here after the words yard drainage, take out from lot three. Um, really apply to all of them. Um, identifying any significant trees uh, along the property line, proposed measures for protection, low impact development practices. Um, the engineers uh, proposed treating the shared driveway runoff, um, remote infiltration such as bioswales. Um, Let's see, E can be removed because um, you gotta have a waiver of the landscape requirements. And that brings us down to number three, which is just standard condition about lights. Um, requires staff approval of anything more than 900 lumens. And the 300 degrees Kelvin thing, uh, dust control measures. Um, and then number five is would require the special would require the associated lease subdivision to be recorded in the Brantford land records or this these approvals would become void. Um, and then six could go away if it's a standard condition with respect to landscaping, but you're not approving any landscape plans, you're waiving that requirement. So again the recap it could eliminate two E and six. We're deleting six too? Right, because it's just a standard boilerplate condition about maintaining landscaping, but at this point, there's going to be none identified on the plans. It's okay. going to be left to the individual homeowners. And I think you said 2B, we're going to eliminate from lot 3. The words from lot 
three. Yes. Did you say that? Yes. Okay. From lot three. Okay. Did everyone understand that? But, so, with that said, I think that if someone want to make a motion, well, I think we should just do it for each application. So you want to do it different? Okay. And, and then we'll just refer to the memo. Yep. So for item number three, the special exception for rear lot one, does someone make a motion to approve the application with the findings and conditions and staff report with the changes that Harry just discussed, which is to eliminate the words from lot three on item 2B, to delete item 2E, and also to delete item six. So moved as amended. Motion made by Joe. Is there a second? So second. Second by John. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that was for the rear lot number one. Same thing for rear lot number two. Is there a motion to approve this special exception for rear lot number two for 292 Meat Silent Road with the findings and conditions in the staff report as Harry has amended, which involves, again, deleting the words from lot three, from 2B, deleting 2E, and deleting number six. Sir, keep going. Motion made by Marcy to, I saw that. <laughs> she got her hand up. Is there, is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. Tell me, just keep going. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that's adopted. Okay, so that leads us to the subdivision, the resubdivision rather, which is item number six. Here right. you gave us a second, a separate memo on that yes. one. You want to recap that? Sure. Um, there's a finding proposed that would be similar uh, to the finding in the special exception, how it would be specific to the requirements of the, of the section numbers in the subdivision regulations. Uh, with respect to the need to provide the drainage calculations, again, um, applicant requested this, reviewed by the town engineer, concurs. There's no need to have all the detailed drainage calculations. Uh, again, fairly standard conditions uh, prior to starting construction, erosion controls. Some of these are redundant with a special exception. Um, and then some specific items with respect to the subdivision regulations. Uh, these are things that need to be added to the existing subdivision map that's proposed. The signature block uh, is required in section 602B, a specific one. Um, all the lot markers required by the regulations, including all lot corners of the proposed open space. Um, a note should be added, um, adding, stating that consideration is given to the development of this plan to the use of passive solar energy techniques required by state law. Uh, designation of a 25-foot site triangle for the driveway intersection with Leeds Island Road. On the second page, um, the land trust has requested that a note be added saying they have deeded right to pass through each of the three residential lots for the purposes of monitoring and maintenance of the open space. I should probably add the words of the open space at the end. Um, they've requested the 100 foot well and re upland review area be labeled a no disturbance zone so that note could be added to the plan. Um, any required easements for drainage, access, utility, or other purposes should be added. Um, and it's already been shown on the plan, it was presented tonight, but what we have in the file um, shows all three lots. So this is a condition H would require deletion, which has already been done, of all the improvements shown on proposed lot three and uh, in its place, putting the words not a building lot on the record subdivision map. Uh, number three, uh, a couple of words are missing at the end. This is about the storm drain system. It shall be determined at the time of the final house design and shall address the recommendations of the town engineer to his satisfaction. And number four, the final erosion sedimentation control plans be approved by the CEO. Uh, underground utilities required. Um, Again, kind of uh, belt and suspenders approach with number six, a special exception approvals uh, for the rear interior lots would need to be filed in land records um, as a requirement of this approval. Um, and um, there's a requirement in the regulations about um, adding basically a backup provision in the deed for the open space so that um, I believe it's offered to the town should, for some reason, the Branford Land Trust dissolve as an entity as a backup provision to make sure it, it goes somewhere. 
um, appropriate. So that would need to be added to the deed. That's section 304H4. Wasn't there something about access to the open space? Uh, that was the, um, I think they have a, basically a floating easement across the three lots. They have a concern that if they had a definitive easement, there might be some problem with utilizing it. If somebody obstructs it this way, they've got, they can go a number of different ways to get in there if they really needed to. So there's a floating easement? Yeah, essentially. And I believe that was worked out with the applicants. Okay, so Harry, what I got is on 2E, you added the words of the open space at the end. Right. And on number three, you had address the recommendations of the town engineer to his satisfaction. Right. Okay, then does someone want to make a motion to approve this three lot or subdivision for 292 Leeds Island Road and, and include the findings and conditions in the staff report as Harry has uh, just amended the staff report dated January 9th, 2020 that we just went through. So moved as amended. Second. Okay. Oh. Moved by John, seconded by Joe. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's recently approved. That brings us to the Nuzzo uh, application, the special exception for accessory farm uses, and I think we're ready to go on that. The question there's the issue of the parking, whether it's the gravel parking. I think we agreed that given the limited number of events that we don't need, that doesn't need to be an application, but there's a provision to check on it to make sure that if it becomes a mess, then the applicant can suggest a way to fix it. Is that correct, Harry? Is that? That's correct. Okay. I, can, I think we went over it, but if anybody has any questions, I can go over it again. Um, I did miss uh, the word on the first finding it's called the annual event operating plan, so just add that word in, I suppose. Where is that in the? Uh, that's at the bottom of the finding one, the very last line of that finding. Okay, so the annual event operating plan? Yeah. So add the word event yeah. between annual and operating. Okay. Yes, I think uh, I think the, uh, the others are the fairly routine. Uh, is there any questions about them here? Do you need to summarize anything? No, I mean, I could just go quickly over the findings. Um, you're making a number of uh, uh, findings about waivers. So on uh, finding one, um, you're finding that the use of low traffic generator and you're blessing the use of gravel surfacing, which is requires you to do that. Um, and furthermore, you're in the highlighted yellow. Um, accepting grass turf as parking service for the overflow parking spaces, blah, 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 as we talked about. Um, number two, um, just a statement that it's complying with the special exception criteria in these regulations. Um, number three is the waiver of the landscaping requirement. Um, and number four uh, is a general waiver of variety of sections of the regulations that uh, require specific information to be provided, soil types, all kinds of little minutia that weren't really needed with this application. There's no real change to the site proposed. Um, uh, requiring the landscape plans prepared by landscape architect, number five, and number six. Um, in the plan, uh, in a memo from the applicant's engineers, a demonstration that the parking needs of the farm are addressed by providing uh, parking basically at a ratio of one per 75 square feet for the portions of the farm buildings open to the public. Um, so you're endorsing that with number six. And the conditions are uh, nothing really unusual. Um, they are specific to, in some respects to this type of approval. So you get this whole new section in the regs, so we're addressing them here. Um, there's a couple of wording changes to the general operating plan. Um, and it's just tweaking about providing alcohol service uh, so rather than referring to the facility, uh, the phrase I'm recommending is no alcohol beverages shall be provided during a non-agricultural farm event except it's allowed in compliance with all local, state, and federal regulations and statutes. Uh -huh. the it's only outside the hours. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's the same wording, same wording as so. Um, the applicant agreed to delete hot air balloon festivals. There's really not <laughs> enough land, so took that out. Um, 
<laughs> C is the requirement for a maintenance plan for the grass turf areas where the events are supposed to take place. Um, D was just a correction um, to limit the reference to the total acreage of the property just to what's in Bradford because that's all you can consider. Um, item E talks about um, the 47 spaces, how they need to be reconfigured, and when they are to comply with the regs, then you can add them. Uh, they can add them to the required parking spaces and up the number of attendees. And F requires uh, provisions for trash disposal on the property itself. Um, let's see, three is all required parking spaces that remain open and available to event attendees. Um, Number four has to do with those small changes about erosion uh, to be installed as the town engineer may direct. Uh, number five uh, would limit the temporary light fixtures to only one unless they come back in and get approval from staff. So I think they said they only wanted and probably would need one, but this provides a way for them to have if they need it or whatever. Um, number six. Um, would it's just a statement that uh, use of is contingent upon keeping the grass and turf areas um, uh, viable maintaining them um, number seven we added to allow the overflow parking spaces to be grass uh, number eight is a typical condition about new replacement lighting it's boilerplate same thing with number nine about dust control and same thing about number 10 with landscaping uh, required that it needs to be maintained and replaced if it dies um, number 11 um, follows up, I think, a comment at the last public hearing about all use of amplified sound and event associated alcohol service should only occur within the hours of operation, but setup could occur and breakdown could occur outside of those hours of operation. Uh, number 12 um, requires the replacement of uh, a non complying light on a pole that was proposed in the plan itself and replacement of a non complying light on, I believe, the house, uh, which is just angled the wrong way, basically. And number 13 limits um, the attendance basically to the number of required parking spaces, I mean, conforming parking spaces that are provided. That's it. Okay. I thought we agreed the grass spaces were acceptable. Yeah. They yeah. Are. Well, why is E removing the 47 spaces? Unless, because right now in the plan, the dimensions don't indicate that you've met them. They might need to be angled. Uh, if you have an 18 foot wide maneuvering aisle, you need 24 of the regs, but you can narrow it if you angle the spaces in ways, or you can widen it, so. I, I explained that we have 24 feet and 24 spots. It's just not all grass, it's all these grass. Um, we didn't talk about the actual. My understanding was that the, the the gravel was the aisleway, and then exactly. the parking was the lawn, and as long as you right. can paint conforming nine by 18, 18 or whatever wide spaces, your, those spaces would count for two people per. Is that everybody's Yeah, attention? as long as the, and then the gravel drive itself, you said was wider than the 10, you said it was 18. If you look in the regs, if, this, if you can make it one way, you can make it angled parking in terms of painting it on the grass. And then would work with the 18 feet. It doesn't need to be changed. You just need to show that in the plan. Well, so we don't, it need, we don't need to come back here for that. No, no, no. no so not at all. Update the plan no. It says you need to update the plan to show something that dimensionally works. Yeah, it says or the reconfiguration. Okay. Yeah. So I just don't want to be stuck with a certain amount of yeah. spots that won't be able to be able to understandable. You shouldn't be. I mean. Okay. 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 Yeah, I think. Um, yep. Can we talk briefly about the annual inspection? Uh, sure. Um, it, it seems to be in per perpetuity. I mean, forever. I mean, I, I I often see this from DEEP on projects that I'm doing, uh, and they want to monitor it and oversee it and, and see. If you know, if it's stabilized over the years and everything, but they usually Im limit it to three to five years. Do we actually think we're going to go out and inspect that every year from now on? It's up to you. I mean, there's a requirement for the annual operating plan to be provided every April, 
anyway while the use is active. Um, you know, this could be an evolving situation where, you know, as this thing gets going, I would imagine they're hoping to have more and more events. So that might, you know, they might come to a point where they want a lot more than 20. We'll come back in and maybe at that point it makes sense to do some site improvements to accommodate, you know, heavier use of the property. So I think this will probably naturally end with a transition to more use is what I understand folks are kind of hoping for on the site. Uh, so this is sort of a starter. Mm -hmm. Approval, if you will. Okay. Um, you know, if it becomes a problem, they could always come back in and modify it. I mean, I just don't know what the future will bring. And also, this is just everyone's clear. You know, I, I'm coming up with this because this is a use that runs with the land. It's not specific to the Nuzzos. Um, right. Hopefully, they're here for a long time, operate the farm, very successful, it all works out. But should they decide to sell for some reason, the approval goes with the property. So somebody would come in and operate this and maybe somebody else. So we just don't know how they may run it, too. So. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think you added the word event to number one. Yep. We, we, you know, we clarified the E that it, you don't have to remove it. You can just reconfigure. Uh, and that's in the text already. So I think we're all set. So does someone want to make a motion to approve the uh, special permit application for the accessory use for non-agricultural farm events with the findings and conditions in the uh, staff memo with the word event added in number one. So moved. So moved by Joe. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. In further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Aye. Okay. You betcha. Good night. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. so now we're on to minutes. And we had two sets of minutes that I think were sent to us. They are December 5th and December 12th meetings. And uh, does someone want to have a chance? We'll start with the 5th. Someone want to make a motion if you review them? So I want to make an appropriate motion. So moved. Moved to approve by John. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second, Joe. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. December 5th meeting's approved. How about the December 12th meeting? That was a quickie one, right? Okay. So we'll make a motion to approve the December 12th minutes. Minutes of the December 12th meeting. So moved. So moved by Joe. And if you can, Fred, were you there? You were. I was there. Okay. Where was I? So you can vote on this. I could? Yeah, you can even vote. Second. 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 Uh, we do have one item. It is a notification on the cell tower application to the city commission. Uh, appears to be, again, another antenna swap and uh, equipment modification request. That's it. Okay, great. Okay, old business. Item number one, we have a CAM application, 16 Halls Point Road. And is the uh, applicant uh, ready to go on that one? All right. Sure. Woke up in the back. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Want to wait a little longer? Yeah, what time did you think you were going to get on? <laughs> I know. Okay. Told you to be brief tonight. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. For the record, my name is Michael Harkin. I'm a professional engineer and principal of Harkin Engineering, located at 78 North Holland Lane in the town of Kellyworth, Connecticut. Uh, here tonight, I'm going to have my client, Eleanor Kelman. For their parcel or her parcel at 16 Falls Point Road. Mr. Harkin, if I could do, I'm just looking at the camera and maybe you can just move it over a little bit that way so that, uh, or, or use that mic and just and, and just well, move it over. So you at least get the back of your head yeah, in the phone. Yeah, we can turn it that way. Okay. The camera's over there. Right. There you go. Uh, well, no. Don't go that way because then I can't see it. <laughs> you, you can just show it to us. Pull it back. There, there you go. You go. There, there you go. That works. Perfect. All right, we're here for the Kelmans at 16 Hogs Point Road. Um, 
I'll be very brief. This is a CAM application. We've been working on this project for about 14 months. Um, this is a project that's been up at DEP. Uh, the reason being is the Kelman's property is in Magenta. It's a very, very small parcel. You can see their existing cottage slash house is in yellow. Three sides of the property abuts Long Island Sound directly. Um, coastal jurisdiction lines right up against that wall. And the reason that it's been at DEP for 14 months is this is 16, the blue is number 18. The Kelmans own both properties. The septic system for 16 is on 18, as well as septic systems from across the street, 17 and 19, are also on 18. Do they own the properties across the street? They do not own the properties across the street. So 16 has had a septic failure that's located on 18, backing up into the house. That has caused um, us to have to repair the septic system on 16. Well, there's no room to repair the septic system on 18, so it has to go on 16's lot. Because it has to go on 16's lot, we have a flood erosion control structure that's normally not permitted to be raised, but in this instance, because it's for the health, safety, and welfare of the public, with the septic failure, we've gone to uh, Brian Gelombuski's office, went through the whole thing. We've gone to DEP, um, Sanitary Division, Mr. Michael Hart, because technically right now, this is a DEP septic system. Because we're pulling it out of DEP, we are now into Mr. Bob Scully's department at the Connecticut State Health Department. Because this meets zero septic uh, requirements of the public health code, um, I am also going to East Shore Health Department, but you guys are the second to last step of this process. Um, it's a CAM application. I've already met up there with uh, Carol Szymanski to go over it. I think you're going to see a, a pretty much an approval letter from her part um, regarding this project. So after we do get approval for the CAM and the raising of that wall slash flood and erosion control structure, then we can go to um, finish out with the East Shore Health Department for the approval. So, so what exactly do you have to do to make it work on that site? You have to raise the retaining wall uh, and then pretty lift much, the system? Pretty much there's an existing retaining wall right, right there. There's a patio that comes out to a dock. Um, this whole area, existing yeah. patio, is in the coastal jurisdiction line. Right. Um, hence, we have this little funky jog in there because that section <coughs> I cannot raise. But the rest of the existing wall will be raised approximately three feet in order to get the septic system. To have a... Correct. I'm dealing with, besides a lot of different entities, I'm dealing with a, a hard design standard because you have a high tide line and the septic system has to be two Above. feet higher than that high tide line, which is causing the, system, the uh, walls to be. So the top of the septic system relative to the <coughs> finished floor of the house, is it now above the finished floor or is it It, it is. It, it so is right now. Step up to the lawn? Correct. This existing structure right now, you have to step down to get into. So it is a little bit, two to three feet subterranean okay. as it is. Uh, we're coming out to the septic tank, flowing gravity to a pump chamber, and then pumping up to the back area. But if I were to go out that back door, would I be stepping up onto that lawn? If, this is where the door is. There's okay. no other doors to the structure. You oh. have to come to a couple steps. And then you'd have to step up. Because that whole back, okay. Correct. There is a whole section down here that you can still get okay, by right. and get through. Okay. And then if you wanted to come up from this side, it would be a couple steps back. Someone could have fun with this because it got a fail. It's this all done to, to repair a failing septic system. So you're going to DEP, Connecticut Health, East Shore Health, Planning and Zoning. <laughs> just so kind of I was wondering why it was taking 18 months or 14 yeah. months. Right? Now you can see my turmoil <laughs> because if you go to each department individually, it's denied. Yeah. I have to get everybody in one room up in Hartford yeah. and go over it and deal with the basically best? with all the heads yeah. uh, of each department. What are the property owners doing with a failed system as all this is happening? Well, 16 has failed. 17 and 18 are way up on a hill. They haven't failed. Every time they flush the toilet, unfortunately, I think it comes in the 16. Well, so, 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 sure. so what's happening with the 16? <laughs> Well, 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 people had to move out. They're, they did. they're no longer in there. That's what I'm saying. Right so, for instance, because this is subterranean, their showers saw a lot of wow. sewage. gray water in the sewage. So now you're creating a new septic system on that property? Is that what you're doing right there? Yeah. 
And it's only two feet above high tide mark? Correct. Well, what happens if you have a storm? <laughs> and it gets a, you get a, a, swale, a, a surge of two feet three, below. Two or three or four yeah. feet or something. Great question. It has the wall that's being raised. We're, with the septic system itself, we're strapping it down, and then we're putting patio pavers over the top of it. Now, you'd say, that's, that's kind of crazy. A hard storm surge is going to wipe it out. No doubt about it. It's better than the option here, because this option is lower. What's happening here is the high tide is coming in, cleaning out all the dry well septic systems at high tide, and then putting it back in. So it's the tide. You have to understand that the septics are totally in the ground here. Bottom of the septic system is that these are dry wells, eight, you know, in this instance, six feet high. You're below elevation zero here. High tide line so it is four, so every time. The, the tides are flushing out the septic system. That's why this is such a, a hard project, because there, there is no good answer. What we're giving is, is the best fix, the best or the worst type of thing. The least impactful? Pretty yeah. much. So yeah. you're strapping down the tanks. Strapping so down the tanks, strapping down the system, putting hardscape over the top of it. <clears throat> um, that's the best we can do. Backwater valves? Backflow preventers. So what we've been doing with the septics is we've been, when we make the connections, um, we, we can't really put the backflow in there except for the pump chamber. But <coughs> the piping is all um, gasketed, in case, you know, tied together type of thing. Um, fern codes are used a lot even though <coughs> the pipes are, are gasketed. Um, everything's waterproof, everything's vacuum tested and vacuum sealed. The lids and covers are locked down. Um, the last storms that we had, you know, like eight years ago, we found that the, the lids were one of the most important things. They would get blown off and put the sand and, and go through the system. If we keep the lids on, you know, generally we're pretty good. Harry, is there anything to review with us? Um. Well, I do have a letter from DEP, so as a request, I'll read it in the record. Uh, this is to the commission, uh, care of myself, uh, regarding coastal site plan review and mandatory referral to raise the height of a 109D flood erosion control structure at 16 Halls Point Road, Eleanor M. Kellman, applicant. Dear commissioners, thank you for referring this coastal site plan review received November 27, 2019 for review and comment. The subject site is a tenth of an acre waterfront lot which boasts an existing single family residence with a septic system, part of the property surrounded by a seawall which appears to be within state's jurisdiction. The proposal is to erect a seawall within the existing seawall and two feet higher than the existing outer wall in order to facilitate the installation of an engineered raised septic system to avoid flooding issues. Where the wall is in local jurisdiction only, the height will be raised two feet. The property is under order from the State Department of Health and the septic the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection to repair the failing septic system. We support the erection of the inner wall, which is outside of our state jurisdiction and qualifies as a flood and erosion control structure, as well as the increase in height to the wall, which is landward of state jurisdiction. Coastal resources include coastal hazard area, AE12 and VE12, rocky shorefront coastal waters and shorelands. Conclusion, we hope that these comments are helpful to the commission. Pursuant to CGS section 22A-110, we request that these comments be written to the record of the public hearing for this application. If we can be of further assistance to you in this or any other coastal management or long outside sign related matter, please feel free to contact me at 860-424-3138. Carol Szymanski, Environmental Analyst 2, DEP. Uh, we do also have an email um, to Mr. Harkin from... Um, Emily Anis of the Department of DEP regarding uh, the application for um, the gang septic, basically, right? Because it's withdrawn because it's going to be a single house sort of system. Correct. Basically, what that letter is is right now it's in DEP's hands because it's going into a single. It's pulled out of Emily's office in DEP, part of our wastewater division, and then it goes back to Bob Scully. 
So we, all, we just have basically a typical um, finding, a typical addition, which is uh, the finding is that the coastal site plan is consistent with the goals and policies of the Coastal Management Area Act, incorporates conditions and modifications necessary to mitigate adverse impacts on coastal resources and any future water-dependent activities. And the only condition is that the uh, uh, priority to start of construction, the installation of features shown in the approved erosion control cementation plan, including the anti-tracking pad, Temporary stockpile areas, silt fence enclosures, silt fencing hay bales location, and so forth, should be established to the satisfaction of the town and CEO or myself. Okay, any questions from anyone? I have to recuse myself on this one, so I can't vote. Okay. okay. The record will reflect that Mr. Lust is, has recused himself from this. So, Fred, you're in? Yes. Someone want to make a motion to approve the application with the finding and the condition in the staff report that Harry just read? So moved. Moved by Fred, second by Marcy. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thank you guys. And happy New Year to you. Okay, so um, that's it for item number one of old business. Item number two uh, Bittersweet uh, Partners, a special exception for a laboratory office. I believe we need to schedule that for a public hearing. Um, yeah, it hasn't been set yet. Uh, the last meeting. Um, the commission deferred to, I believe, Chuck, you and me to set the hearing date, um, recognizing that the application is still in wetlands. Um, they are discussing it tonight. They're having a meeting, I believe, at the community center. Um, so once I hear what the results were of the meeting, maybe we can talk about the date um, to comply with the 65 days. Uh, that will be up on the 7th of February. So in order to do the advertisement and so forth, the sixth would have to be the day unless time extensions offered. Uh, but I can find out what happened at Wetlands and absent any surprises, we could schedule for the sixth. Uh, I don't know what the Wetlands Commission schedule is. They may, what their meeting schedule, they'll be able to act before the sixth or not. We can still open a public hearing and continue it if we need to without okay. having an action for Wetlands. So, so bottom line is it looks like it'll likely be scheduled for yeah. public hearing on the sixth, but if not, then you'll just consult with me and we'll come yeah. up with a date. And the uh, hearing date for the hotel um, it was provided, the same kind of provision was agreed to by the commission last meeting, but it will likely again be the sixth. Okay, uh, same just, thing for, this, for the next one, item number three, the Hampton Inn Motel. Yeah. So likely the sixth, unless you're the top, so you have something else. Yeah, I, frankly, I'm juggling workload with uh, the retirement of Rich and yeah. um, uh, Jamie Frederick moving on to the Llewellyn's office, so we're coming up with interim provisions and looking for permanent people. So that's actually out there um, as of today. So those two job postings out for assistant planner and the zoning enforcement officer. Um, so it brings us new business item number yep. one, which is the sub three lot subdivision. Uh, we just table that one. I would suggest tailing it to the 23rd and uh, we'll attempt to have a report written for that meeting. Okay, that just came in. So yep. I have number two, which is special exception for grading from our friend uh, Three Elms Road. <laughs> um, four. Four. Uh, the four Three Elms Road. Uh, four Three Elms Road, okay. And um, so we need a public hearing on that one? Yeah, for that one and the next one, I would um, suggest and hope you may again delegate to the chair and myself setting the actual date um, so we can sort of juggle. Um, what's coming in and how to get reports done and get things, mm -hmm. recommendations over to you and juggle your own workload too. Uh, this was a longish meeting and hopefully can even them out a little bit. So I will talk to the applicants and talk to you, Chuck, if that's okay. okay. And Is that okay, everyone? Really sure. Okay. 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 So we'll do that for items number two and I don't have number three, but number four. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm missing the three. Uh, for a new business. Okay, so that will bring us to other business. We well, actually, uh, I don't know if we want to put this under new business, but I suggest maybe you consider adding to the agenda two applications that came in today with respect to Leeds Island Road. Uh, one is an application for the special exception for the common driveway, and one is an application to modify the subdivision approval you just issued to add the third lot back. Right. So um, we could set the public hearings for them for the 6th of February, which would be the earliest we could do it. Okay. Legal notices if you want. 
Sure. Is okay. there a motion to add that, that those items to the agenda and schedule the public hearing for February 6th? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Other business? Other business. I think I got these on my head, but I hope you bear with me as I have to read a couple things. Um, let's see, the first item is time extension request for 1721 North Brantford Road. I've got a letter here from uh, Joseph Maneri of LJC Holdings, LLC, um, which is requesting a time extension. He says it's set to expire on February 20th, 2020. Um, when I look in the file, there's a notice of decision which says that the approval expires on February 20, 2019. So I think I need to investigate the discrepancy. Um, also, I think with the expiration date being February 20th, we don't need to act on it tonight. So I'd suggest that I go back to talk to the uh, Mr. Maneri and find out what the actual expiration date is. Um, is this is the five years to do the work. This is the five plan? years. So the actual document in the file says the five years was up February 20th of last year. Um, he's saying it was 2020. Um, okay. If it's 2020, we can bring it up a meeting before February 20th, and we can, you know, commission can act on it. If it wasn't, if it was the 19th, then we'll have to, you know, regroup and figure out what they need to do. Which right. I think it probably is not resurrectable, but I've I've heard of retroactive extensions before. Yeah, we'll we'll, we can talk, yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. uh, so that one I'd suggest tabling. Let's table. Uh, the next one for Six Business Park Drive. Again, this is from attorney Robert Harrington, and he states that the original approval originally granted uh, expired on December 4th, 2019. Um, so the question is, um, do you believe you can resurrect it, extend it to December 4th, 2024? So I'll defer to our resident land attorney. <laughs> My, my understanding is that the, it's not specifically addressed in the statutes, but that I know a number of other commissions have done. In other words, do you understand what the issue is? The issue is you have five years, this is what, site plan or special exception, five years to complete a project. Special exception. Special exception. To complete or start? Uh, to well, it's the site plan portion of the special exception. Site plan portion of the special exception, the work has to be completed within five years from and you can get a five-year extension. So you have essentially 10 years. So the, the issue is it's been six years. So technically it expired a year ago. But you come in and ask for a retroactive extension. In other words, I don't know how long they're seeking. But uh, another five years. OK, so they're seeking a five-year from the original, not from now, but essentially four year. But the, yeah. the, the five-year effective the date that it actually did expire. Right. And do we permit that? Again, it, the things are silent, but a number of commissions have said that's okay because otherwise they got to reapply. And I don't. Know. So the site plan's been reviewed and approved. We approved yeah. it yeah. for because I don't think there's a building there right now. So it's an addition. Oh, it's an addition. Yeah, it's addition to the Stony Creek Medical Center building. Oh, we're on six. I'm sorry. I thought we were. On yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we were on one. How did that happen? 
How did that happen? That people forget? I I don't know how to you know. You, well, you, not, the town does re, um, <clears throat> remind them that the fire is up. We don't track it. Uh, there's don't. so many out there. Um, most people have an engineering firm or an attorney's office oh. track it for them. Or some and, people do it themselves. And, there, and there's no language saying that they have to apply for this within the, the last year. No, I mean if you're strict legalists, you can say, look at it, it's expired. You can't. And you can't already seek to extend it because it has already expired. But this, you know, doesn't make sense to. I, I I've just seen it done because crap right. happens, and right. that it's it's the same plan that mm -hmm. you already approved once, and and had you done it, you know, a while ago, you could have gotten it. So yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. I just it's state statute. Allows you to get the extra five years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. You can yeah. get the ten years. The issue is that they didn't request the it. They didn't request it timely. In time. So, but, but this but isn't I, a controversial issue, though. No. No, I I'm okay with it just because yeah. it's it's. I don't know. I, we we've approved the application. They just haven't finished it, and they missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. So what are the rules really if you don't sorry. follow them? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I yeah. would say, you know, if there had been major change of circumstances, yeah. we don't have to grant them the extra five years. Right, yeah. right. But right. the reason you don't usually grant them five years is that there's been some change of circumstances, mm -hmm. new developments, you know, stuff has happened. But I don't, I don't, has there been? I don't, I, I don't think so. And it's also not a very, I mean, it's a 5,000 square foot addition to an existing, it's not a whole new development either. It's a, right. Well, if it's taken five years to, and not done anything. Yeah, I don't know the specifics. They're going to do it in the next four. I mean, you got to remember you're setting a precedent. Yeah. And, yeah. and there may be projects that we don't want to mm -hmm. extend. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. In other words, I may not, even if they had applied it on a timely basis, we can still deny it. And I would use the same criteria. Have there been a change of circumstances yeah. that, you know, stuff has happened? That would, you know, and it could be, I don't know, our regulations have changed or something, but you, that normally wouldn't make a difference, but I, I don't think there has been. I don't know. I mean, we can table both of them and look at them further and, and see what see what they want to do. I think it would be better if we follow the law, we'll follow the regs, would say that it, it didn't make the approval dates and approve and then come back and have them reapply, but just fast track them if there's nothing different. Right. Then keep, keep it real. You can. Yeah, I mean that that that's a that's a reading of. Uh, I mean that that's. Are you saying to do that on all the ones that have expired or all requests for extension? No, not in, no. If you do it timely, then that's why you have it. Oh, okay. that's yeah, why the statute not, say you can mm -hmm. request it. Yeah. No, you, you say you can. Like a you, whole you, lot more work for you, you can. You. Mm -hmm. Job security. For you. I I don't know. I I guess <laughs> in some of the limited development work <laughs> I've done, I've had to do this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I and I've gotten them. And, and I'm aware that other towns have done it too. That, that's the only reason I'm saying it. But, but I'm not aware of any case that says you can do it or can't do it. But, we, but we're doing it retroactively based on the fact that this wasn't a particularly contestuous application. I mean, how yeah, is that no. a precedent? I mean, if it were, people would be. Yeah, no, I, and I understand. And not aware. Right, no, I, I, I understand that. You, the precedent issue that if you do it for this, you should probably do it for anyone. Well, and we should consider doing it if it's not a. I'm saying if it's not a, con, you know, a, a con, contestant with the river. But if you if you uh, put it as a condition, the reason why you're getting a retroactive extension is is because and only because it, there's no changes to. Yeah. The so maybe maybe we should no table it and make sure that that's what's going on. Find out a little more about these two. I mean. Because I, say, in fact, that if there was substantial changes that we're not obligated to do this, but because of this, so this way it leaves you, uh, it doesn't get, it doesn't, it's not open and shut or, you know. It's, uh, you why, why, why don't we get more information about each of these? Because frankly, I don't remember them. And, uh, yeah. Okay, you know, absolutely. So, and, and, yep. and talk to them and, and tell them, look, it, did you, did you yep. miss the time frame? And, uh, yep. Have there been any change of circumstances and why so, should So yeah. one is late too? It looks like they're both late. <laughs> That's oh, both of them are? They're both late. late. Yeah. Both, both of them. I, I'm not sure about number one. If number one, if it goes through February 20th, 2020, 
no problem. I can take it to the next meeting. I, it's either 2020 or 2019, same date, February 20th. Right. So okay. the document in our file says February 20th, 2019. Um, I just like to know. Just and then, so and, well, ask the applicant. Does he think we have authority to grant a retroactive ex extension? Okay. Because I like to, you know, I know <laughs> it's been done, but who knows? Maybe it's illegally done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So three bond establishment. Three bond establishment. Looks like the women lost. That's it. The, the Yukon women lost. Yeah, Baylor beat them good. Should have just as well come to the meeting. I know. I do have a memo from our outgoing CEO, Jamie Frederick, um, stating that uh, the owner has requested to bond the outstanding driveway apron in order to obtain a temporary CO uh, so the residence can be occupied. The driveway apron will be paved when the asphalt plant's reopened. Uh, she recommends the commission approve the bond in the amount of $500 for the driveway apron. Is there a motion to that effect? Approving a $500 bond for the driveway apron? So moved. Second? Second. For discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thank you. Time extension. What's this one? Uh, this one actually was submitted on time. Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is 33 West End Road, and um, it is set to expire February 5th, 2020. Um, Let's see, they're currently waiting for final site plans from the engineer. They just, um, it's uh, two, two family structures, it's the approval it was issued back in almost five years ago. It was February 10th, 2015, right before I got here. Okay, it's a two-family structure. It's two two-family structures, I believe. Okay. Uh, how long are they seeking? Another five years or what? Yeah. They don't say, so I would say yes. Two-family structure or two two-family structures? I'm sorry, I got to read the approval on that. To construct a two-family house and one proposed commercial building. I think there may be one already on the property. Remember right? What I was told. Yeah, I don't have the whole thing in front of me, but I think that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, so 33 West End there. Avenue, I think it's where West End Avenue turns down there. Okay. Near the railroad tracks as you go on the south side of the railroad tracks. I remember that. There's a house there. The building I think there. there's a house. I think they wanted to add another two family and yes. a commercial building. I think that's what it is. Let's just where they, they did that. It's Bob Regal. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. I do remember that. Apparently it, Portland well, presented it. That was in a, do we a new zone for that? I mean, it was right uh, by the, the uh, railroad tracks. Uh, yeah, it's right by the railroad tracks. Uh, and you believe that he had a boat in it or something and yeah, we wanted, family house on the corner. It's it the was, mixed use zone. We wanted to have a, a mixed use by the railroad tracks. Mm, right. Yeah, that was done right, right before right, then. It was right, a zone right. change from R3 to mixed use. Right. Okay. And we haven't changed the zone's still the same and everything else, right? Yeah, yeah no. And they haven't finished yet? No. Yeah. Well, they haven't started yet. And they didn't say how, how long an extension they wanted? Uh, no. Well. Did they say when they were going to start? Uh, they would like to proceed with the construction this spring. Which, which spring? <laughs> <laughs> this is five years now. It's already been five years. Yeah, I would assume the 2020 spring. I kind of remember this. Do we automatically do five years or do we say? Yeah, no, we you could give them a year. You can give two, two years. Three, yeah, two years. You don't, don't have to give all five. Well, if they said spring, how long do you want to give them? Give them two springs. Two springs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's give them. Uh, two years. Three years. Two or three years. What do you think? Two years. Okay. Well, they only like, he asked to build the one. He didn't say anything about the commercial building. So they have a three-year cushion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll grant him for what? Two years. Two years. Okay. We'll give him a two-year extension. All right. So move. Is, is there a motion to that effect? Motion for two years. Do we Second. Second. Commercial building in two years as well. Uh, they, they're both, they're small. 
little buildings right down the railroad tracks. Enough big. They got two springs. Okay. Got two springs. I know people yeah. would take two years to build one small building. Okay. So. They could come back and ask for more. They can ask for more. Okay. <laughs> for summer. Okay. So there was a motion made. Did someone make a second? So no moved. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So they got two years. Okay. Um, before we move on into the next item, you can go there and come back, but there are other bond requests um, that were submitted to us and that uh, our former ZEO, who is still helping out, um, has responded to. Um, do you want to yeah, hear about these? Yeah, let's get them done. Let's okay, done. there's uh, three. There's one for a driveway apron for lot nine. This is uh, Low Mantra Avenue, the... Uh, the new Gould Lane, yeah, the Gould Road thing. Uh, lot 10, driveway apron, landscaping. Hi, let's do one at a time. What's the okay? What's one? Let's knock them off. Well, let's see because I got to read these. I'm sorry, I just got this back at the end of the day. Double Beach. Okay. All right, the ZO is crossed out lot nine and put. Instead of lot nine, number 15, La Matra, which is already paved apparently, so I guess that's done. So we don't need to worry about that one. Uh, the next one is lot 10 or number 17, La Matra, and this is for landscaping, hydro seating, driveway apron, $4,000. Okay, so your motion to set the bond $4,000 for the lot. And, and add it to the agenda. Add to the agenda, set the $4,000 bond. So move concurrently. Okay. Both motions. Okay. So motion made is there a second? Second. For discussion, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. So that's approved. Uh, the next one is identical, except for it's for lot 11, number 19, La Matra, driveway apron, landscaping, hydro seating, $4,000. Motion to add to the agenda and improve the bond for that amount, for that lot. <laughs> Keep going. So moved. So moved by Joe for the uh, second. Keep by simple. John. For discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you kindly. Thank you. Any else? Keep going. That is it, I believe, of new items. Okay, that's it for items. Okay, we have election of officers because we need every, we need the what five regulars here and they're here. Okay. Yep. So I think you know as our uh, nominate. I, uh, <laughs> I I feel miserably. I, I I I was just going to say that I think we should keep the uh, the officers in place, we should do an acclamation, which means that we all agree, no disagreements. Well. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. You know so. my conditions. <laughs> you don't have to run me, okay. I'm fine. <laughs> you, uh, Can we you accept that as a motion? Yes, it, so there's an exception to accept the report of the nominating committee to, to keep our existing officers, which are Marcy as secretary, and I guess myself as chair. Yes. Correct. Okay. It's it's job reading so, even even though you're the nominating officer, I don't think technically you can't vote. Sorry, Fred. So yes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Joe made that motion. Is there a second? Joe Chadwick. Second by John. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. I should say, though, just to say. Okay. Anyone else want to? I'm reading, though. I was watching you. Let's take it over. <laughs> okay. Planner's report. Anything else? More. Um, it's all about staffing at the moment, so we're collectively working with uh, to get people in and get the resources to keep providing services. Okay. I'm busy Great. doing that. Okay, good. Motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, wait. one more. What? Oh, excuse me, what? Okay, okay. Um, there's a possibility adjourn. we oh. may have an interim zoning officer ready to start next week. Um, Who's that? Well, I can't really say because we haven't nailed it down. Um, so I think we could probably have, maybe Jamie could sign things, but I, it, it, I'm trying to think of a way to technically do this because you have to, per state statute, designate that person, is my understanding, because you need to provide for the method of how zoning is enforced. So that's been determined as far as I know, is the commission needs to appoint, basically, the zoning officer who can sign. So right now it's Jamie and uh, Richard are the signatories, and I believe on the emergency backup. Um, but I don't really, 
be in the position of actually signing off doesn't make any sense because I don't want to be the officer if something goes wrong having to defend somebody else's decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, is there a way to vote to endorse the person who may be chosen by the town and agreed to as a zoning enforcement officer? Or is that too loosey goosey for I'm, you folks? I'm unclear. You're saying that the new hire for. It's not going to be new hire. Uh, we're looking at a temporary person um, who is experienced as a zoning enforcement officer. Uh, this particular person lives in town, knows the regulations. I just can't provide the name right. at this point. What, what, what is the reason? Is it in the regulations or the statutes, your understanding, that we need to appoint the zoning enforcement officer? I don't know if that's clear. I think that's the, been the practice. Um, there's a portion of the state statute you probably know. It's uh, the zoning commission has the authority to yep. determine the method of zoning enforcement or something. Right, there is. Uh, which has been interpreted, I think, fairly widely in many towns as the commission endorses that person. If you want to say you're fine with that person signing off as long as they've been hired and go through the whole process um, through the town, um, so does this person become the new zoning enforcement officer, or they just they would be in? designated as someone who could sign as a zoning enforcement in officer interim, in the interim. Right, right. And have they acted in that capacity prior? They have in other towns, yes. So that they have Casio designation. So they know what they're doing. Right. Do we do that with the last the girl that was with Jamie? Yeah. Did that? I don't remember yeah. that book. Uh, it was you know, back a bit. Yeah. 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 We, we probably, I, I think we did do it, but I yeah, don't know whether we needed to do it. Was, it. Yeah. I, I, I just don't know. I, I'm just looking enforcement. The regulation shall be enforced by the zoning enforcement officer. I'm looking for the part that says the commission shall appoint. I, I know there's something that says the commission's, they, there's it's something the statute, in the statute. Right, right, something right. It's like a one line says. provision or something, right. yeah. I, I'm comfortable with, uh, the person who gets appointed from from continuing the duties, and we can officially authorize them at our next meeting. If okay. We need to do that. So, but in the meantime, they can sign sign off if it's okay. assuming they've been appointed by the town. Okay. Is that okay with you? Yeah. 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 That's, that's, right. that's effectively the next hire. Harry? I'm sorry. That's the next hire. Delegate the approval next authority to Harry. The person Harry is the next instance? hire for the position. The new hire. Or not. I don't know if well, we, we need the interim person and the hire. Oh, okay. It's given to yeah. us for him to. But the hire wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. But I think we it should take a while. Okay. But then the next meeting when the person knows, we just don't know. Who it's it not is that. Or. It's not that long. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Then if we say no. Yeah. That person right. doesn't get the to be fired. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Sorry. On favor. Aye. For adjourn. So who's this person? Okay. Uh, I, don't, I think it's a part time. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.